Rose from the dust to the sun. They claiming that we the one. Never one on one. Teamwork till we done. Sent on a mission. We got ambition. Never scared. We won't run. Never one and done. Some sit back and some like the hunt. I pick my teammates up when they fall. And if I ball, we all ball. Crashing balls, crossovers and all. Just call us the balls. Don't fear nothing. Call us the law. Serving them all. We outside. We barely indoors because we gave it everything when we had nothing. Gave it everything when we had nothing. Holding on by a thread, couldn't grab nothing. Mm. Seems we moved on to a better place. Shine, shine away, away from the shade. Mm. But now that we're here, uh huh. Ain't no going back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We've got another day here of ESL1 Malaysia. Europe close qualifies. Denog, we're going to be kicking off down in the lower bracket. We've got Bet Boom taking on Cybercats. What an exciting series of Dota action in store for us. How are you doing on our lovely Friday evening? 
10 seconds. I'm doing all right. I had a nice little walk today. It was pretty cold, but uh, I still braved it. And, you know, that earned me the right to be able to sit inside in my little comfy jumper here and watch some Dota. Some Eastern European Dota as well here in the lower bracket. It really does seem like that's the divide, right? Lots of Eastern European teams in the lower bracket and the two remaining Western European teams, they're sitting up top. Looking pretty comfy up there are Gaming Gladiators and Entity. That'll be the upper bracket finals. And we'll get to see who will be the first team to move over to the grand finals as well. Book themselves a, a best of five. But for these two teams, they still have a, a bit of a road to get to that stage. Now, we haven't had the opportunity to cast any of Betboom's games yet. We have actually watched two of Cybercat series, so a little bit more familiar with them. But one thing I just noticed when we got in, I said it off the screen, was, oh, Betboom, they're playing with Gilgi. I'm not 100% certain. Force Major. Wait, what? He's the... Uh, Force Major's the one he's standing in for, okay. is what I'm saying. I, I, thought, I thought you were saying, like, his Force Major just is uh, messing around. He's got Gilgi as, as his name. Um, I am going to check if he played yesterday as well. One second, but I'll do it. I'll do it. You, you, you look at the start of this. So all you, I'm going to say is speak. they banned the bristle back. Force they banned the bristle yesterday. back. They okay. See, they banned I'm the bristle fast. back. They did their homework against Cybercats. Like that's just what you have to do, right? You need to stop them from running you over massively. But Cybercats, they've got good scaling. The thing is, though. I don't know the exact stats of how long games are lasting for, but you have to feel like it's getting shorter and shorter. You know, most games are done by. Honestly, by the 15 minute mark, you could pick how most games are going to go. So I think you need to draft strong lanes that have the potential to scale. So Enigma is one of those. Obviously, you're going to be able to get out of the lane relatively well just because the creep waves are going to be pushing Doom. Even if the lane itself doesn't go well, you've got that backup option of being able to, you know, go Devour, go the Midas, go down this sort of route. But Tiny, Dawnbreaker, they just hit these unstoppable timings that you're going to have to deal with. And something else that I haven't mentioned. We've got a Dahak team, and they haven't picked the Dahak hero on the eight pick, which is uh, a little Dahak surprising. Yeah, I've seen a majority of teams have been putting a lot of emphasis on Dahak's Visage and Nature's Prophet in the first phase. So kind of interesting that they swapped her up a, a little bit here on Cybercats, feeling like the, they need some importance on the Coddle and the, and the Viper instead. So I wonder, well, at the moment it looks like it's can, going to continue to be some supports banned out. So... The Hog's going to have a lot of heroes at his disposal here. Five seconds remaining. I mean, it's already... I mean, the Doom's good against the Visage, but it's also one of those heroes that doesn't really pressure all that much in lane, so you can really get away with running something like that and being totally satisfied with it. Um, feels like Cybercats are just trying to get away with banning all the heroes that are going to end the game early. Yeah, Enchantress, Chen, Viper, Coddle, they're all early game style of heroes. So it really wouldn't be surprised to see them go down that route with another type of hero. Beastmasters still potentially in the pool, but they picked the Dawnbreaker, so I'd say that's a little bit less likely. Seconds, Maybe a Timbersaw is set to be banned out here by Cybercats. Five seconds remaining. I'm trying to see as well where they're... Dire team pick. Yeah, Bloodseek is another one, okay. right? Just need two Radiant items and then you can go. Pick. I mean, this team fight is so strong on Cybercats right now. Do you feel like Betboom need to kind of cover some of their team fight issues here with the next couple of pits picks? Or do you double down, go for a lineup that's not cooldown reliant and just look Ten to get kill off the kill and me. play off the... The, the big ultimates that Cybercats won't always Five be running with. Remaining. I want to see them get something that goes on the back line immediately. I think it's a pretty good Night Stalker game already for Betpoom. Like, anything that's just going to be able to find the Warlock, find the Enigma, prevent them from casting their big team fight abilities. And honestly, you can get away with running the Dawnbreaker as like a position three or a position, uh, sorry, position four or five if you go down that route because you just solo guardian in onto wherever Night Stalker's diving. They do play it as a position too as well, if that is a capability heading into the later phase of this draft. I know Lowell has a, a very good Dawnbreaker. Mm -hmm. I'd be surprised if teams didn't have a good Dawnbreaker, to be honest. Like, it's... it's I don't want to say it's an easy hero, Radiant but it's certainly not the most complex. Oh, are you calling him brain dead? What's going on? Wait, a little you, bit. You, whoa, 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 what the hell? Toxic Danog, Jesus. No, it's an easy hero. 
Uh, Not as easy as Bristleback, you know, QW, QW, but uh, certainly doesn't take the, the highest dream. amount of skill, for sure, to be able to play the Dawn Break. Honestly, the hardest part of that hero is playing around Nine your Luminosity, remaining. making sure, kind of similar to a Slardar, that you're using the 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 hit that's going to proc the, uh, the Luminosity to its fullest effect. Well, there's that Nature's Prophet, though, so they're going to be everywhere on bet boom a lot of global potential is going to be incredibly scary because cybercuts are pretty immobile with their lineup honestly warlock slow enigma slow your know, doom is pretty slow as well at the early stage once you get blink you can kind of get across the map a little bit faster but i'm Those quite cooldowns concerned as well, yeah they're non-existent basically outside of the solar guardian for for bet boom so that's a really good sign means that we might be looking to see another one of these like we, we don't know exactly what's left to be picked up, right? Like, we could see this Marcy be a 5 paired together with the Nature's Prophet. It could be a 4 paired together with a Dawnbreaker. Could be a Tiny mid, could be a Dawn mid. So, Bat Boomer keeping them guessing, which I like. It's really just, I, I still think they need some way to be able to get it onto the back lines. And I know you hate the hero, team but Storm Spirit's still oh, decent. Stands ready. All okay. right. I, uh, I casted two Sven games early today over in North America. How'd it go? It, this hero looked incredible. It won both games. I don't know what was going on. I was actually very impressed with the, the Sven players. So one, the last game, they picked it into a Nature's Prophet. And uh, of course, this hero works very well with all the bonus armor. You're able to deal with the, the Nature's Prophet treants, which is is really nice. Um, besides that, I, I think they just did a really good job to be able to enable him off the, off the back of stacks and he got aggressive early was like very active with a lot of god strength so we'll see how she gets is going to play keep in mind as well then she gets you i mean this guy went absolutely beast mode in yesterday's series he i think only died one time and he both did. games was, went over like 20 kills it was 42 1 and 27 oh. was his kda oh <laughs> yeah pretty beastly Rain bristleback you can understand the weaver certainly was just some really good gameplay well, we'll see what they're going to look to try and ban out here to protect the Sven. Bloodseeker's already gone, of course, in the second phase from Cybercats. They've gotten rid of the Razor now as well. Is there anything that you're looking to get rid of to really enable Sven this game? Ten seconds remaining. Mm. Dire team ban. Just more stuff that's going to kite him around. Like, I feel like the, the Dawnbreaker's going to do a decent job at it already. The Marcy too. Maybe just a little bit more into the magic stuff. Like, BKB piercing is going to be really solid for them. So... I mean, I'm honestly a little surprised that they went ahead and banned the Void Spirit for themselves. I think that would have been a decent way to go for them. Instead, they pango. Okay. I mean, it's just more stuff that's going to be able to disrupt those backlines for sure. Eventually, you build into the Basher as well, so that's a good way to stop Black Hole if you need to. And again, it's a quick way to be able to jump in onto that Warlock. Right? I think that's going to be the key linchpin of every single team fight. Find the Warlock, burst Ten him down, because there's a lot of AoE damage that they've got on Cybercat so far. And I think it's also, it's another hero that's in incredibly flexible. Like, I think the only lane we really know is going to be the Nature's Prophet Marcy, but you could put Tiny, Dawn, and Pango mid, and you could put both those heroes in side lanes as well. I think Tiny is just the only hero that can't be played as a four. So I think there's a lot of flexibility for Bet Boom, and it's going to make it a bit difficult here for Cybercats with their last pick, because if they are looking for Igor's position too, but if he doesn't really know his mid matchup, it can be a bit awkward to get that gotcha pick. Maybe Alina could work here. I mean, I, the, you would need to then choose which hero you start on. And I still feel like you have to start on the Warlock. But if it's a mid Lena, you're going to have a good time against a Tiny or a Pangalia. I'd say Pango is probably the most likely one that's going to be going mid. Uh, you're going to be able to be buffed up a little bit from the right-click damage because the Sven Warcry and just stand your ground. Kaka's fine too, though. I, I just wanted a really strong laner for them to be able to play around. And once again, the team fight is nuts on Cybercats. All right, we do get a low pango, so it looks like it's going to be the position two pango getting picked up. And Gilg is on the four tiny doom. four. Oh, yeah, it is going to be a full doom as well for Cybercats. Okay, so I I like the Conquer last pick. I think Conquer Sven is going to have great ways to be able to deal with the Nature's Prophet. You because prior you kind of had some issues with how you could split push the map, or I should say cover your cover the enemy split push. Your know, doom doesn't really have that capability. Warlock doesn't until he gets ag shard. 
Enigma, not really as well, doesn't have the easiest way to deal with the, the Treant. So Sven and, and Conk is definitely going to be able to fulfill that role where you're going to have issues with the Hawk pushing out the side lanes. And like you said as well, he's just an incredibly strong laner, can, can play in front of the Warlock and the Enigma. You were kind of asking Bet Boom to go for heroes that could jump these supports because they are spell casting supports and very important to the team fight from Cybercats. So if you've got Igor positioning in front of them, then maybe it could make it a little bit easier for the Warlock and the Enigma to be able to get their abilities off. And I honestly think, unless I'm missing something, I feel like this Doom Enigma, they weren't locked in as to which player was playing which hero until the very end, until that Pangolier was picked, because now they know that there is no BKB piercing disables until that Pangolier gets bash. And that just means that this Enigma's game is freed up so much more. So they want him to get the early farm. They want him to get that uh, that early BKB so that he can be that big, effective team fight that they've drafted for with their lineup. You should be able to get the Bash, though, at a pretty decent timing, right, though, for the Pengu. Is there anything that you feel like he has to be really worried about in the early game to slow him down? You're a trusty mate. It's not necessarily what's going to slow him down. It's Prepare. what else he needs to deal with, right? Like like I said, he needs some. they need some sort of way to be able to get onto this Warlock, and I feel like you need the Pango for that. So he's going to need a Blink Dagger. He's going to need, you know, these other items that are going to enable him to still farm and scale and, sure. you know, do all of these sorts of things. So... I don't know, like, uh, he might just need three items, and then by then, maybe they've taken over the game too strongly on Cybercats. Good positioning, though, from Igor. Popping the smoke. See if they go for the D-Ward on the high ground. Yeah, Seneca's parving his way over there. Are you ready to run? 300 gold, a little bit of experience as well. I think you're mentioning as well, I like the point you bring up, just the fact oh, that maybe yes, Lal is going to need too many items that are reliant on initiation until the you know the bash comes out a bit later on but maybe even the black hole isn't going to be something they're worried about because bet boom definitely have the capability to end this game early i feel like you you've got a pretty greedy lineup on dire and enigma three a doom four they're going to want their space Sven needs to be farming at the triangle this hero needs to play from ahead but i think bet boom definitely have the capability to take towers early and look to invade the jungle and it's going to be very difficult for cyber cats to be able to kind of split the farm up between all their heroes which we're really just taking a lot what? of unnecessary damage here. He was never going to be able to secure that one. What are you wanting at? How did he... Well, one, they got all four bounties, so that's kind of pog for Bet Boom if you're a Bet Boom fan. How did he hit both of them? It didn't even look like the, the Starbreaker was going to hit at least one of them. Just know. a very fair and balanced hero, that's how. They've actually switched up these lanes a little bit as well. Noticed is going bottom together with Suneko. All right, I like this... Uh, do I like this? Actually, what's going on? What am I missing? Why are they doing this? Do you have... Uh, I think maybe just thinking that Dahak, they want... Like, he is your win condition. You want him to be getting the farm, and you can't have the Enigma just constantly denying a range creep away from you every single chance you get. Mm. Also, probably it's a little bit more vulnerable to kills on the bottom side of the map, so if you've got this Nature's Prophet playing up on the top side, you just have a look at his items. He's got a Blightstone, of course, very good for harassing out, but if you ever get the lane in a good spot... There's nothing stopping him from just TPing down and giving you that plus one, and then he can just TP straight up back to the top lane. Yeah, because... you know, with a Warlock with heals, with a Warcry, with stuns, it's a little bit harder to do that if you wanted to TP up top. The way I look at it is just the, f the fact that I feel like Nature's Prophet laning to a Sven is... Like, he has cleave for your trance, and he's got a bunch of armor, and he's not really going to care about the, the right-click damage, but maybe it feels like if they... Also, a, a side note is if Dawnbreaker Dame being down bottom, he can deal with the Eidolons a little bit easier, like Furon's pretty single target damage, and same with the the Tiny as well. Well, not Tiny. Tiny's a lot of AoE, but you're not going to use your abilities to deal with the Eidolons, so... Maybe they, yeah, I mean, you just see, <laughs> look at that. I don't yeah. know if you're watching bottom Seneca and notice I they was. just use both their abilities to get rid of the Eidolons. And that's Enigma's, that's how you farm, that's how you harass. That is everything that the Enigma relies on in the lane. And the thing that they really need to be mindful of on DK Focus, he cannot have his Eidolons in melee range. You can afford to get them Celestial Hammered, but he can't Starbreaker them. Those uh, those Eidolons have 60% magic resistance. And if you have a look at Dawnbreaker's spells, the only physical one that she's got is that Starbreaker. Be, uh, a lot of free gold and experience picked up for the lads down bottom. Unable to continue with the micro. We'll take a look at mid at the moment. Lol. 
on the right, Peng Li up against Igor's Conquer. We were both very impressed with, with Igor's play in, in both the series yesterday as well. It was another big reason. I think or like pretty much everyone on Cybercats did their role perfectly, but definitely some standout plays, and he should in have a pretty good lane. Series. In the second series, everyone did their job. First time around, it did feel like a bit of a... A draft mishap came their way. Bottom lane, Doom's getting a little bit of harass onto him. Level two. Basil, let's see if the bonus armor is going to be enough. And yeah, it looks like it is. Get all plus five armor from an ice from the uh, the ice armor. What is it? The move slow, twenty five attack slow as well. Only for forty mana. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's getting nerfed in next patch. Also, just uh, talking about the micro, I feel like oh, here focus. That's uh, a T2 Tower, friends. Who gives a damn about that? A little bit of harassment onto DK Fergus. It's fine, though. He's underneath his tower. He's got plenty of regen. I feel like you can't afford to be just slowly harassing out an Enigma. If he's farming all the way back here, which he's always going to be because of that demonic conversion denying the range creeps, then you're going to lose out on the regen trade. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're kind of like half shoving the lane down bottom. It's at a stage where you need to, like, you need to full shove it out so it goes under the tower instead of kind of just on the outskirts. Otherwise, the lane's going to continue to stay in a position where DK Fogos is going to be fine. Basil. So not used to the ice armor. He'll be fine. He'll definitely put a lot of damage into the Doom. Notice he's so close to level three. Your Eidolon should be able to secure that, but he's already used the abilities regardless. Great timing with the Malefus from DK Fogus, and Key 2 has the level 3 as well, so that a second point in the Eidolons is going to be a lot of damage if they don't kill them off early. Oh, he's even got the urn. I mean, it's just so much easier now to be able to out-sustain with all that passive uh, uh, mana coming through. Gilg is just going to get too <laughs> oh <my laughs> Easy. Oh my. Love to see it. Easy like that for Mr. Gilg here. They've got great Creepy Cleaver up top as well. The Hawk freely farming kind of towards his half of the lane. Just on DK focus as well. I know the first couple of lanes obviously didn't go too well for him losing those Eidolons there. He's not doing fantastically on net worth, but we saw his Brewmaster play in uh, yesterday's games. His micro is on point. He just needs to make sure that he's not giving away these for free. I mean, that's, that's a couple of waves now that he's just been too far forward. Are they going to go back on Faisal? Notice he's going to have enough mana shortly. Seneco actually gives him the mango to work with. Unfortunately, we'll miss out on the last swipe. They have the slow coming up from the rebound on Seneco, but Faisal will be okay. I mean, this ice armor is continuing to be such a nuisance and kind of surprised there. Do you, do you feel like there's a lane where Notice might need a sick? It seems like they are having a bit of mana issues. A little bit of mana issues for sure, but it's not like you're frequently casting spells down here either. Top lane, hitch to it. Might be in a bit of trouble if they can get the treants in front of the warlock. Great micro coming out from the hawk, but the storm hammer is going to hold back the treants, but it's not enough as Gilgate gets one more punch in the secure first blood. Great hero to be able to give that first blood to as well. Tiny now with his full wind lace coming out to him to be able to complete the tranquil boots plus that extra little bit of movement speed. So, feels like he's uh, going to be on roaming duty soon on this uh, Tiny. Of course, Kill Gear, like we were saying before, usually on the Hellraiser's roster, playing with Bet Boom this time around. What do you reckon about the little suffixes behind some of these players' names? Like, Kill Gear is Punching Bag. Uh, I think Dehux is Loser. <laughs> it's, there's certainly some, uh, what do you call it? Self deprecating humor coming out from uh, Bet Boom in particular. It's a uh, is, is self-deprecating humor a good thing though? Attack. I don't know. I think it has its place sometimes. I mean, you don't want to talk bad about yourself sometimes as well. Positive I mean, things. You talk bad about me all the time. Yeah, what but are you talking about? That's not me. I'm not talking bad about me. I'm talking bad about you. That's not self-deprecating then. Oh, it's a different thing, that's isn't just it? Being a bully. I see. I understand. <laughs> Eagle. He's got the boat to work with. Log can utilize the Rolling Thunder as well if he wants to offset the combo. But he's just going to make sure he stands nearby. Beautiful read, Lol. Recognizing he didn't need to use the resources in his ultimate. Just standing nearby so Nako could get the jump away. 
And this is exactly what Bebu want. You know, it's a lot of resources being committed onto a support with no kill. And I feel like you're totally happy to have notice down here in this solo lane. Like I was saying before, there's just no pressure being put down onto a Dawnbreaker by this relatively weak lane to begin with. Beauty. Doom, Enigma, doesn't really do much. Instead, it's going to be Lyle that actually makes the first rotation down here, looking to try and get a kill onto DK Fogus. If they can get this kill while keeping the creep wave alive, that'd be huge. Yeah, we're going to try and TP down the Conqueror as well, but the boat's on cooldown for Eagle, so this rotation's not really going to do much. And even the Hawk's going to look to get involved as well, so two heroes from Cybercats will end up going down. Oh, it's going to be okay. The tower, not enough to get the kill in the end, but look at the damage that can now come out with the help of the Treants. He goes being a little careful. He's got the four points of the Tidebringer, so he can look to push people away a little bit, but his damage isn't that high just yet. We'll still push it away, but it's a couple of TPs that comes down towards this bottom side. Three, in fact. Oh, no, they messed up. Oh, no, they didn't. Never mind. The bottle refill was achieved, but, yep, Warlock and Enigma and Kunker all made their TP rotations down towards this bottom side. So what do you do now if you're, you're Bet Boom? Because this is a lot of information with all the TPs being on cooldown. You've got Rolling Thunder. You've got this Teleport being back up shortly for the Nature's Prophet. Do you consider about maybe shoving mid and, and looking to smoke? Uh, I was potentially saying you can just go top, right? Like, no one's going to be able to run back up towards Not the top Faisal. side of the map. Poor Mr. It's Doom. okay. It's okay. Like, he, it's a Doom, right? It's a support Doom. If he can stop this rotation from actually getting something more important, like a tower, that's a big deal. Like, he still lives because of the Ice Armor as well. So this is actually a big deal that Bet Boom had to have that interrupted. I feel like if they all went top instead, you had Dawnbreaker sitting bottom with a Soul Ring, could have very easily just Solar Guardianed up there, and they had no way to make those TP responses happen on, uh, on Cybercat's side. So it feels like a little bit of a missed opportunity. TP's coming up in about 10, 15 seconds on Cybercat's side. Shouldn't she get to... They're gonna actually seem shortly with this deep jungle ward. I think they need a plus one. I don't believe they have the damage just between Lol and Seneca. Maybe that's where the Solar Guardian can come into play. And they've got the Wrath of Nature as well for good measure. So beautifully done from Bet Boom. And that was all set up thanks to the Deep Observer Ward placed prior from Gilgir. Dyer's top tower is under attack. I see Dan, he's certainly having a good start to the game. Getting that first blood. Lots of effective wards. Good rotations. Top lane, they're setting up for the Hawk. Eagle, but the level 9 is going to have Faisal look to TP in as well. The Sprout, it's not going to block off Eagle. Maybe the bonus movement speed from the Hawk will try and path his way to the tree line, but doesn't. Have, oh, no way. This Iron Branch into the TP out. They've got the vision, but they don't have the stuns. Oh, no. Dark. Oh, God. Eagle was just a little bit too keen. Shouldn't be throwing out that Infernal Blade against the Nature's Prophet. He's got multiple ways to be able to TP out. Seneco might be the one to fall, but they don't have the boat, so we'll see if he actually does. Never mind, it's the rebound just getting him easily away to safety. Look at all this juicy farm that Seneco can get. A lot of experience, a lot of gold. They should be the level 6 completed on the Marcy, so... That extra damage coming up from the Elish could help out for... Maybe securing a kill up top and then leading that into a tower. Even just little things as well, like being able to remove the Fatal Bonds from yourself with the Unleash, it gives you a basic dispel, gets rid of the Malifus too, so yeah, it's going to be a nice little bonus coming through for Snaker. Yeah, that's, a, that's a very good point. Something that I feel like is, is quite often overlook, overlooked is just the, the fact that you can use it as a bit more of a, a defensive toolkit. It it's basically a satanic, right? Like, you're using that, and you've got the sidekick for the lifesteal. Sure, it's not like 200% lifesteal. <laughs> basically but satanic. Is <laughs> Bro, I mean, the only basic it, thing is the fact that it gives you a dispel. <laughs> what? And the you've other, got lifesteal. Yeah, but that's another ability. That's, that's just... I know what you're trying to say, but that's another ability. It's not with Unleash. Look, I'm just going to sit by and have my 5,000 gold saved because I don't have to buy a satanic, and I've just picked Marcy. You know, very easy. Well, it's a shame that Call Marcy is uh, no bueno. But no, but support Marcy that scales That's is very bueno. In very my bueno. Eyes. It look like Seneco is going to go down that route, though. Obviously, against the Enigma, it's one of those few abilities that you can actually just pull someone out of the black hole as well. So that's going to be a really useful tool to be able to have. And it's a big reason why I feel like this game in particular, an eighth lens on Marcy, is a really oh, wise tool. Still actually in a bit of trouble. He's going to need to play off the bottle sips, maybe running into the pip. The Scorcher's going to continue to pop that. 
It's going to expire shortly to Hawk with the Sprout. Oh, what was that attack range? Oh, they see the stack as well. This is a juicy stack. It's a big deal. It was only three mana away from being able to swashbuckle away to Seneko. He's going to be walking up into this. He's got the ultimate. Who do they turn to? Uh, Eagle's going to drop the boat as well. It just wants just the creeps, creeps and maybe get an out. The Hawk and Gilgi is going to be able to deal with the Doom. So that will enable Igor to be able to step out into the river. Bottom lane, noticed. He's going to be cautious. They could black hole and turn this around, especially with Shigetsu jumping down to the low ground. It's beautifully done. First black hole of the game is able to secure a kill onto the offlane Dawnbreaker. Look at Tahak's build. He's going for the Desolator straight up. Really wants to just be able to consistently go, 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 be able to push towers. Honestly, the fact that they haven't been able to take one 11 minutes into the game when they've got this global lineup is a little surprising to me. Mm. Do you like Desolator? Because you're playing into a, a Sven and Conker's got a pretty decent amount of armor. Like, he can go into, like, an AC as well. I... Well, yeah, what are your thoughts on this? I'm not quite sure. I mean, if you don't go into the death, so where's the damage coming from? Sure. Like, it's, it's going to be need to be all magical, right? Or Phasel. He, this time is going to be the punching bag. So, Nick, we'll make sure of that. We're going to continue to invade into the jungle. But it might be Dyer that's putting some pressure back down to bottom. Notice he's going to get no help. The swipes go straight through the middle as a delta split from Cybercats is perfect to help secure the kill. Hmm. I really want to see him look to go into this, like, first item Aghanim Shard because this Malphus is just ruining his life. Every single time that he's trying to Starbreaker to clear out the creep wave or survive, he's just getting interrupted and it means that you're not getting that final slam off of it. So it's only uh, about three or so minutes away. He's 600 gold away from being able to buy the shards, so... I think it'll sync up relatively well as Seneko makes a TP down bot, trying to get a kill onto Fogus. And they should be able to do so. The rest of Cybercats, all their attention is on to Gilgu at the moment on the Tiny. She gets to getting involved pretty early on. Another use of the ultimate, and he's going to look to try and push top and get some pick me up farm. But meanwhile, they did get that T1 tower oh, down bottom, though. Of course, it did come with the life of the Enigma, but at least you're able to find the first tower of the game for Cybercats. So I want to see them try and make a play around mid soon on Bedroom because you're only 350 gold away from the Mithril Hammer. You've got great vision up on the top side of the map and you know that the Sven TP'd up there previously. So the only way that he's going to be able to contest this is by running through all of your vision. And you saw him pop the God Strength previously. So you should be in a position to be able to respond to whatever they've got to throw at you. Black Hole, still 50 seconds off cooldown. Like you're really in a position where you can make something aggressive happen here. Look at Kilgi's positioning. He's playing so aggressive right now. They've got both sides have some pretty good wards to play with. He's all pump faking the ultimate. Not going to use it. Want to kill it? What is my guy up to? Distracting. <laughs> well, they're not. I guess they're getting farm. The hawk has got Desto coming out. Dyer, I, I, they've got such a good ward behind the T1 tower to play with mid. Mm -hmm. Gotta go shortly though. I mean, they, they might have waited a little bit too long. Enigma's mm. got that uh, black hole in 10 seconds now. Sven's going to have TP. Has God Strength in 15. Gonna play around that rune. It's Gilgir that ends up getting it. She gets to. Might be in a bit of trouble. Defensive use of the boat's going to help out with the run buff. Well, I was actually not going to go in with the Rolling Thunder instead. So just multiple... Ultimates will be expended between both sides, but we have a farming game it looks like in store for us and I Bounty. Don't believe this favors bet boom. Maybe they're gonna hit a, a Timing they feel comfortable with in the next couple of minutes or so like a, a big 20 minute timing But I think Cybercats late game have to be really content with with how they could scale Oh, absolutely. Super late game, Cybercats all the way. But it really just feels like Bet Boom are like, okay, well, these past couple of movements that we've made really feels like we can't do anything. So we need our BKBs. We need this next item that's going to engage the team fight. We need to kill the Warlock. Like, we haven't even seen a single Chaotic Offering. She gets to bottom so lane. They're destroying with the lane ward. They know no one else is behind him. 
This is a gigantic kill, finally! Bed Boomer gonna catch a break with someone showing by themselves. And the Storm Hammer's not gonna get enough distance away as she gets her will go down. And the rest of Radiant, look at this, they're rotating bottom, looking to intercept any of the extra reinforcements showing up to protect the Sven, and they'll run into H2O by the secret shop. A really good maneuver from Gilgear, along with Noticed. Just looking to continue the push on into mid as well. Dahak not revealing on the map, really wanting to keep as much unknown as possible. He's even got that Aghanim Shard freshly picked up at the 15 minute mark, so yep, straight on into ratting. This is the way that Betboom like to play, just cause you to have to look at too many things. Like you see a Prophet farming in the lane, you see a tower taking damage, you see them converging onto mid when your Sven's still dead. What do you do? You have to choose something. Gather darkness. Go give. In a bit of trouble. I don't think there's anything they can do to help out. They are starting to part their way to the tiny, but a percent damage. Even though it's only one point in the midnight pulse, is still always going to be a bit of an issue here. Or oh, the tiny eagle has his BKB now completed as well. So Cybercats definitely have the toolkit to be able to help. Defend this T1 tower once Spetboom feel comfortable to be able to siege. They are so close to being able to pick up a bunch of these items though. The BKB almost coming up on the Dawnbreaker, almost level 12 as well, so that's going to buff up the teamfight effectiveness even further. Tiny, still about 800 away from the Blink Dagger. Pango, does he have anything coming out to him now? Uh, oh. I feel like he's, had, he's been sitting on about this 400 or so gold for quite some time on Lyle. Very uncharacteristic from him. <laughs> Did he complete the treads? Did he have brown boots into defusal? I think he might have. Not sure. But he is going for that basher. So really feeling like they don't need to get onto that warlock, I suppose. Dad, That's really the I'll trend of these me. position fives lately. Like something that has great AoE teamfight control. Wyvern... Warlock, to the lesser extent, Enigma, Treant. Those are the ones that we're seeing come to much more prominence. This is a very minimal net worth lead for Bet Boom. The Nature's Prophet's done a very good job to actually move out ahead of farm, bottom lane. Yogi is eyeing up Shigetsu. They're going to turn for the easy kill. They're going to be pretty quick oh. on this. The TPs are starting to come out, and they're going to close the distance onto Tahak, so Eagle with the combination. Uh, the Solar Guardian's not going to be able to do enough to keep Tahak alive as DK Fogos jumps in. Blink reveal with the black hole onto three. That is what you love to see. What a round of the ultimates coming out from Cybercats and Bet Boom. They were not ready to be able to combat this. As I'll chase down the Dawnbreaker. Four dead. Soon to make it a wipe as well as Cybercats. What a team fight. They got the ball rolling now. It's a good way to reply to the Dawnbreaker, right? You just set up, you know exactly where that Solar Guardian is going to be coming in. So, yeah, Enigma, great positioning once again by DK Focus to be able to make that turnaround happen. They're coming to defend this tower, though. It's only the supports at the moment. Listen, they can't be on the Conquer, but I don't know if you could just stand here and do this. The Hawk's back alive as well. As soon as they lose the tower, the formation's going to be broken. They've got to be cautious, in fact, on, on Bed Boom. They might just feed away a, a couple more lives here, and it looks like that's going to be the case. Taneko and Gilgit both killed off the cause and now respawning. They're going to have to cancel the TP out of Noticed. Just so much survivability being provided by this Fen. Even H2O, he's... 15, 20 gold away from being able to pick up that Aghanim Shard for himself. So again, more survivability for the team. I, I just, how many times do I have to say it? The team fight on Cybercats is nutty. And we saw it come out in that previous engagement. That's a bit of a concern now for Bet Boom. It's going to very shortly get to the stage where we're going to be mentioning that Bet Boom need to avoid fights. And the Hawk's actually looking for Roche. All right. Ooh. Don't hate it. Can he solo just? Yeah, can he solo this with the greater trains and Deso? Mm. 
Maybe he might want the lucky shot coming through, but well, all the vision reveals the fact that Suneko, the team, they're around here and they want that quick pick off. Jigetsu, he might be able to find it. Look at the damage coming off of the god strength. Suneko showed on the D ward and well, Cybercats with a kill, they're going to move this into the pit. Don't have TP anymore on the Prophet. Well, he's going to go for the Rolling Thunder, but they've had an opportunity to get out. So this they're is another ultimate so completely wasted. Oh no, we got bashed. Eagle, can he get the X? Yeah, he's going to be able can. to catch him out. Faisal's got the Doom at the ready. He can use the Blink to close the distance. And there we go. The ultimate's not even required. As Bed Boom, they are crumbling in this mid game. It's like they're making a lot of awkward decisions. Like I said previously, they're actually looking for more. Not even wanting to full on commit with the Roshan. But yeah, Shigetsu's going to be able to get it. Yeah, it feels like it's all well and good to want to split the map up, push a lot of different objectives, but you got to do it with the right heroes. It's got to be with the Nature's Prophet and the Dawnbreaker, and it does really feel like a couple of times now, Notice and Tahaka have been the ones to kind of lead with the body, which doesn't really make too much sense. That's why I was really wanting that Blink Dagger or that Night Stalker to be able to get in onto the back lines and just instantly connect. It feels like the rotations are a little slow, particularly because Gilgay has played this role of like, they might be able to get the DK focus top lane. Oh, man, Gilgay, mm, Gilgay like, needs this is his blink. This is yeah. so much, man. This is what I'm saying. Like, this is why they can't go for these sorts of plays. Like, I feel like if there was anyone to be able to make those kind of plays, it's Marcy, because you've got Radiance the rebound to be able to get out of a lot of these, you know, precarious positions. Yeah, it's just, uh, we're going to be 22 minutes in, and oh, it's still going to be without a blink dagger that they're playing with. And Pango's gone for this more... Uh, not initiation kind of item build, the fusel into Basher Faisal. It's going to jump in. The rest of the team, they're going to be a bit late to connect. Faisal holds back the Pango at the moment, so Eagle actually will get the X out in the nick of time. And look at Shigetsu. Couple of swipes yeah, of the big dagger. sword, and now Gilgir as well. Shigetsu not going to consider about charging up the higher gun. They got the bottom lane that's shoved out, so it looks like it's all going to be up to the objectives to get you to claim. The power of this fan, man. We, we saw him basically being per minute in the game on that bristle back, having one level. Well, pretty equivalent here, level 19 at the 22 minute mark. Blinking away. That's kind of taunting Gilgir a little bit. He is the punching bag this game, but he's finally been able to get that uh, Blink Dagger up for himself now with this Creep Wave and the Philosopher's Stone helping him out. We got. So it. there's something. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, uh, they've They're... got a bit of a timing here. Like, I believe... Is Basha... No, he went the Academy Shard on the Penguin instead. He's tired of being X-marked. He just wants to be able to break out that because it, it kind of feels like the formation drops once that's used. And I like the fact that they're going for the split Igor immediately after Igor is giga split from the team. Yeah. But BKB TPR is always a beautiful thing if they don't have a way to deal with that. Yeah. Top BKB pissing stuns are at a premium. And, you know, Lal opted to go hug? for the thing that doesn't make him die. That's uh, a very, very deep TP in. Yes, it is. And they should be able to pay for that. Solar Guardians out. They're going to look to take the team fight, but they all group up for another gigantic black hole from DK Focus. And what do you know? The rest of the team I need by to clean up. The tips are well deserved as DK Focus does it again. Even just little things, like you might think H2O didn't need to be there to drop the Chaotic Offering, but Marcy was coming in with that Aether Lens, looking to get the Dispose out and make sure that uh, someone at least was able to get outside of that black hole and provide any kind of teamfight control there. But once again, just the positioning on point, the teamfight, way too strong. And no Glyph up for the next three minutes? You've still got, well, God's Strength is gone, but you've got all these heroes just pushing up into your base. Radiance Middle Barracks are We'll respect the respawns, though. They do have, of course, the big ultimates on cooldown, and that truly that has been fun. the X factor throughout these engagements. So let's see what the call is going to be from Bet Boom. Shigetsu. All right. Th this could be a pretty big kill. They've got the outpost to be able to TP2. I, I think it just... Shigetsu, we'll see. 
You should be able to get the kill throughout the sprout. The rest of Cybercats are starting to swing towards his location. They might be relying off the, the rum buff to keep him alive long enough. But Shigetsu tries to turn it back it. around. The stun holding them at bay. But Lowe recognizes his role, just targeting straight towards the Sven, making sure he can't get any damage out throughout the team fight. Eagle's but the rest lot, of Bed Boom is still in trouble as Eagle is going to look to clean up. From one to the next target he goes. On to the Hawk is next. But the BKB protecting the nature's profit. The Hawk's going to look for a TP out. So Eagle's just going to turn his attention over to Kill Gear. And they've got DK Fogos nearby. We well, know opportunity for a blink away is Eagle. Well, if it's not this fan that's doing the damage, Eagle is at the stage where he can fulfill the role. 8, 0, and 12 on Igor. Again, it's just this Kunker. Very strong lane, very strong team fight presence. Buffs up the rest of the team and their survivability. I'm stunned that H2O was able to survive that long into this team fight. Like, he doesn't have any defensive items at all. He's got boots, wand, and shard. So he was just standing right underneath a lot of this vision from the very beginning of that engagement. Kind of nutty. And it feels like Bed Boom need to put a lot more of that focus onto killing him because... Even some of this itemization's a little off. I understand wanting to go and try and fight when they don't have their cooldowns, right? They, they didn't have the Kaodok offering. They didn't have the Black Hole. But they still had a lot. Like, the boat came off. You had the Doom used there. I think Lyle really, really needs this, uh, this Basher for himself. But then the question is, who goes in first? Someone needs to do it. Yeah, it's... I think you, you're looking for a fight where Bet Boom are able to play with a lot of their mobility and kite the, the, it's it's difficult. I don't know how they're going to be able to do it, but you need to be able to kite the Sven's BKB, multiple BKBs, Radiant like the initiation from Cybercats. They are kind of, once they're into the middle, it's very difficult to disengage. You know, you're blinking onto the Doom, Sven jumping in as well. You know, Maybe Radiant with the movement speed, but Bet Boom have a lot of control and the... Oh, he actually... Okay. I was going to say, Nature's Prophet's going to have the Sprout Leash to play with as well, but he actually went for the 100% no mischance. There's no reason for it, right? Like, who's actually going to be moving around too much? Like, the Blink Dagger, sure, but I feel like Doom and Enigma shouldn't be getting caught in that. Uh, I was looking at that as well, actually, and I was thinking, like, does it behave similarly to the level 20 Sprout, where, like, even if the trees are gone, as long as it's still within that six seconds of the Sprout duration, you're still gonna miss if you're within the radius not they sure tp back for the hawk phaser it's a freebie she gets who's in the base though he's gonna recognize that there's nothing he can do but just continue to right click in as much damage as possible but as soon as the solar guardian is laid down that is just a beacon for dk fogos to drop the black hole and set it up onto two and notice well he is committed down bottom there's gonna be no escape for the dawnbreaker if she gets who's going to join the party as well, and we'll clean up. <laughs> Nicely done by Cybercats again. Just divide and conquer. Use your superior team fight. DK, focus. These black holes, man, they're on point. This is what happens when you've got these, like, huge team fight abilities that you have no way to stop. They're just going to run over you in the mid to late game every single time. Positioning, of course, needs to be on point, but you've just given yourself no option to counter it. Are they... How... They can't kill Eagle! With double damage, maybe, but he's a little low on the old HP. Or, sorry, on the mana on Lyle. And with that urn ticking, he can't even bottle. They get the jump in. Gilgi is going to be able to follow up as well. It's a beautiful combo coming up from the tiny, but she gets to as well, swinging to top. This is getting to a stage where maybe one more team fight from Bet Boom, and they might call it because it's all Cybercats in this game one. I don't even know if it'll be a team fight. They're, they're currently sitting in a 2v5 situation. No buybacks. Shigetsu still feeling really strong. Has the god strength up in another 10 seconds. Be able to buy the satanic as well now with that last hit onto the tower. So, yeah. I really don't see a way for Beppu to be able to come back into this one. Radiance top tower has fallen. Radiance Eco's still holding onto a broom handle. That's how, like, focused in on he is. And just, like, destroy them. Give them nothing. Radiance top barracks has fallen. And there ain't really much for him to hold, I suppose. You could take the essence ring. Yeah, Quill is fine. See what tier threes are able to find, but a oh, twenty-one thousand net worth lead. Who gives a damn about tier threes? You got one hundred percent probability right now for the lads on Cybercats. 
is not going to be an easy road back for Bet Boom. As soon as someone shows in the lane, you see Cybercats just on the prowl. I... I don't think they can take this fight. You need to get an opportunity where Cybercats are not grouped as five. And that's going to come... I mean, there's no reason for them to ever be in a situation where they're not grouped as five, though, right? Eagle? Shigetsu's at the Level ready as well over the trees. He is eight. Oh, nice oh. oh, well. Love's well, gone. Oh, Couple of swipes. Igor should be able to catch up to Nick on the tree lane. They look like they're mentally tapped out of this one. She gets Go for the rat to hark. You can do it. Yeah. <laughs> Bottom side. He's just continuing to send the tree and sit again, making sure he's not Yogi? revealing on the map. Oh my god, he's in that spot. They, oh, oh my oh, lord. Oh, dude, that is. They don't even. I don't think they, they even. They know. Do they? They know. I mean, with these Wild Wing Rippers running away, oh, they, they will know. now, but they didn't. It's not like they, they didn't see the blink part. They're going to see him now. DK Fogos. There we go. The Hawk's teeping in, but yeah, as soon as Shigetsu jumps on the tiny, he's going to think otherwise. Uh oh. The Hawk. Faisal's going to see him shortly. He's going to Shadow Blade. Oh, Faisal. What a beautiful item. A Solar yeah, Guardian's going to come out, but. Doom, half duration's been expended now. Radiant are starting to TP down to the outpost. It's actually a, a, gonna be a decent fight. Dyer, they're slow to connect. They're gonna be able to get the combination to hard quick on the fingers with the BKB. They'll turn it back around on Igor. But look at DK Fogos waiting in the wings, patiently ready for the jump, trying to bide his time. And there he goes, but instantly the lol. The bash is coming out. The swashbuckle, it's going to be able to cancel the ultimate in its tracks, and they'll still turn their attention to chase down Eagle. So the Conquer, another big kill for Bet Boom. They're going to chain this into Eagle, into H2O's life, and they're not done. Gilgi with the toss back onto DK. Fogos has Hellraisers, some science of life, and look at Shigetsu. Lol. Cancels the TP, the swashbuckle, and the Nick and they get another bash for good measure. As hell raises. That that's really what we've been waiting for. We have not seen it the entirety of this game. And finally, 32 minutes in, we get a good fight from them. We get a good fight, and it's all on the back of Lyle not getting caught inside that black hole. Like you just cancel it, and it suddenly goes all the way back towards Bet Boob's side, right? Like they, they just can't team fight into that. It really does feel like they need that that AoE control coming through. The BKB is still such a big factor. I don't think Bet Boob could have played that team fight more perfectly. Look at that second Roshan as well. Giving themselves an opportunity to potentially go all in. I mean, if Dahak was. Wanting to pick up this Sages for himself. Mm. Just look to go oh, they have a sentry. Moonshot. Oh, no, they have a sentry in the pit. <laughs> <laughs> they just tried that. So mm. they're going to know. Also, really... They're being T4s. No. Okay. No. No, no, no. It's no not way. happening. It Gilkin? was 100%. This is incredibly deep. They'll get the buybacks and they're going to get out. That is a gigantic win for Bet Boom. And the Hawk's not messing around. He'll BKB and TP up, making sure there is no opportunity. Denog, what is going on? Chance. There's a win condition now. Oh, and it's made even stronger because Lyle, I believe, he's got the full Agadim Scepter coming out to himself as well. So that's going to be very significant. You know, he went the Shield Crash uh, cooldown in ball, so... Yes. So that he's able to get a lot of those BKB disrupting spells, especially now that they're starting to run a little bit lower. Six seconds on the Enigmas, Conkers down to six seconds as well. Sven, six seconds. So just to be able to have these consistent bashes is going to be a huge deal for Bet Boom. Was and now, they, now the nerves start to set in a little bit for Cybercats as well. Like, yeah. can we go up onto these uh, this high ground? Do they have buybacks? Are they going to be able to turn this around onto us and just win the game? There's a sh there's the Ag shot in the pit. I don't know if the uh, Cory can see it with the Treant. I don't think that's still how it works, If even if someone provides it vision. Not sure. Well, the Treant's dead now, so... Uh, yeah, it was just a Hark saying, look, I've got my shard, so... Who cares? I guess, what, who, Tiny Marcy and, and tiny. yeah, it's lit, it does nothing. Marcy's is alright. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, it could be nice if the Sven jump or reposition from the Doom. 
They're going to smoke. All right. Well, the, the issue is his top lane. I guess the Nature's Prophet's been able to deal with that at the moment. They do have a pretty good ward in the back line of Dai's Triangle that might catch them out shortly. Kanka would be a dream to be able to begin on him. Oh, they would have seen the X actually dragging him back towards the Triangle, but still not opting to go forward. Smoke's running out. They're going to seek to Hawk shortly with this ward. All round about where the Nature's Prophet is. It's so tense, man. All right, 15%, says Lord Gaven. Mine. Do you, uh, would you agree with that? 15%? I'd say it's 50-50. 50-50? Jesus, all right. Yeah. Either they win or they lose. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's just not what I'm... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Got him. She gets his going Scepter. All right. Not the... This is still the Not same the thing, Superman. right? Not the Superman. Oh, God. I mean, if you don't have buyback, you may as well. There you go. What do you so, sell? I think you sold the Echo Saber. Um, trying to see what the basic dispel can help against this game. Doesn't look like anything crazy. Lucky Shot would actually be kind of nice. Right, we're going to see shortly... A, a team's going to look to play around a lane that's smo uh, that's pushed out. Probably the mid lane is what we're looking at. You see at the moment, hey, Hellray, sorry, Hellray, it's a bet boom. They've got this observe ward. So as soon as the lane gets shoved down in a decent spot, if Cybercats, if someone goes to try and push it out themselves, and they'll be in a position where they're ready to pounce. And I feel like bet boobs don't hate this either. Like the Huck's oh, just about to happen. all the way back here. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's about to happen. On the Huck. They're going to see DK Focus for a second. Gilkey's going to go in. There's a big kill if they're going to be able to he find him. That's the BKB expended to Hawk. He just jumps in the middle mindlessly, though. DK Focus is able to get the black hole out. What? But look at the Hawk. He's trying to play around with the Satanic. DK Focus, he's got a refresher. He's got the black hole and the BKB for the second life. As there's going to be no answer to the black hole low. He's stuck inside the Rolling Thunder. And what's the call now on Bet Boom? Oh no, they still got the Doom as well. They've got everything at the ready, every ultimate they would ever desire to turn this game back into their favor. The Cybercats find three and they lose absolutely no one. They might get noticed as well. The ward on the cliff, scouting out the Dawnbreaker. Ooh, oh, nice blink. It's a hell of a blink, but there's nothing can really do. No blink, no bleak AB, no TP. It's gonna be all up to the Duke in shoes, on to Mr. Dawnbreaker. And meanwhile, they're on to Gear as well. Nature's Prophet's gonna try and TP onto Hark, but he won't be able to catch up to Shigetsu. The Hark's gonna be really cautious, man. If they get the kill onto Dahak, he just brought back and the rest of the team. Starting to connect towards the Sven's location. They have to be cautious. What just happened with Bet Boom in that last fight? Well, you just, you're TPing right into the middle. You had a rolling thunder go off, and I didn't see a single attempt to stop both of those black holes. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. It's probably back up to oh, two percent. I liked the start of the fight. Being able to go in onto the Enigma was fantastic, but there was just no follow up. Now. Feels like Cybercats, they're back in the driver's seat. They can wait the 50 seconds that they need for the black hole to be available. They can honestly even just hold themselves up inside their base because they know that their buybacks are going to be coming up, what, a good four, five minutes before the uh, the Nature's Profits is. And you're not... It's really more than likely you're not going to get another opportunity where you jump DK Focus to start the fight because he's playing with the, the ninja gear now from that T4 neutral item. So it's just going to make it that much easier for the Enigma to be able to position safely. It's also... What it, do you do? I, yeah, I don't know, because you're going up against a gem now on H-Duo. It all comes down to initiation. Of course, to be able to enable that is off the back of Vision. And the fact that Bet Boom don't have a gem to play with, they're going to lose a lot of map control where they can get that jump. So for them, control the triangle. That is the call. you got to keep these lanes shoved out. Well, whenever it lanes up their high ground, it's going to be very obvious that no one's inside the base. So, I guess that's a nice thing about the Nature's Prophet from being able to use the Treants, so no one has to show. Gold for my Edge Sword, such a nice item for the Kunker, just buffing up his damage even further. 
Yeah, it's just the buffed up version of the uh, the broom handle, you know? He was holding it <laughs> for the first 25 minutes of the game. He's like, you know what? I want that extra attack range. Oh, interesting. I haven't checked till now. The Hawk went for the Trent damage instead of the teleport cooldown. He wrath. just wants the full rat, man. Yes. <laughs> I... It's all about just trying to distract away as much as possible. I mean, look at those great Trents. They've two and a half thousand HP. That's more than me most games. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. S Again, going to be very difficult now for Cybercats to play with. You are always going to have a lane that's shoved out, and someone will be forced to react to this. Notice has to be very careful here. I mean, they know that they've got a, a sheep stick up on the Kunker, so you can't just say, oh, I'm going to be able to Starbreaker away, or I'll, you know, BKB, blink out. No, no, no. If you get put into a bad spot, especially with blink sheep, you can get burst down 100 to 0, and a lot of these fights that Bepum have been winning have been on the back of him being able to come in with that Solar Guardian and turn the team fight around. Uh, this is huge now. They're going to lose all their control of the triangle. That, that's two wards gone, and, and now Radiant, they're going to be playing with no vision on the map. It's going to make it... Pretty much their next ward has to be to maybe take a Roche fight. I actually don't even think they can defend Roche. The shot's still in Roche, man. It's still there. Sure, uh... Who wants it? Doom? Conquer? Sven? Just an extra seven armor? Why not? Anyone on Dire. Radiance is... Yeah, no. You, you, you take anyone on Dire, will be like, yeah, I'll take that 1400 gold. Thank you very much. Especially now at this stage of the game, you know, in the Infernal Blade, you're going to be above level 24 on, well, at least the Nature's Prophet. Wonder if they do end up scouting it out. You can see noticed as well. He's he's in two minds. He wants the Aghanim Scepter. He also wants the Abyssal Blade. Doesn't give them vision of the uh, the Aghanim Shard, unfortunately. Tossing the tree in there by Gilgir. Noticed. Oh, they found him. He can't. He does in. have a buyback to be able to rejoin if it's going to be required. Down for eighty. Phaser's got the jump as well. Doom instantly looking to target the high to Hawks off to the left side though, but DK Fogos runs straight towards him and look at the crits! The Hawk, all oh the my this attack killed the Hawk! He's back to full, standing his ground, combating Shigetsu, they're gonna toss both of them inside the sprout, but the Hawk, can he win the, the man, man fight? fight? The Mono and Mono for the Rampage! Eagle cleaves him down, secures game one! What a lost team fight! Mr. Eagle take the bow! The Conquer going 18, 1 and 8. And it's gonna be Cybercats in the end taking this game one victory in the lower bracket round two. <laughs> That's all I can say about that game. Well, it was crazy. It was back and forth. I mean, at the end of the day, the team fight just won out. I, I really feel like they had a lot of good laning heroes, but there was no, there was nothing that was going to be happening after it for Bet Boom. And there were a couple of times where they just took some crazy fights for no reason. Like they're, they're running head first into a team that has like four exceptional team fight ultimates when they've only really only got like one, maybe, maybe two at a bigger stretch for Bet Boom. I don't know. It, it seemed like they were all over the place, not just with their movements, but with some of their timings as well really not wanting to allow Gilgir to be able to get that blink dagger for himself, I feel was a huge mistake. I mean, wh when did he end up getting it? Like 20, 23 minutes or something like that? Um, uh, 23 minutes, yeah, dead on. So, I don't know. It, it just felt like you weren't enabling anyone to make plays. And again, there's a reason that I was calling for these things like the Night Stalker, like the the Pangolin with the Blink Dagger, because you needed to get onto those backlines and prevent people like DK Focus from controlling the early game, which then allowed Igor and Shigetsu to be strong enough to have the supporting cast to control the late game. It was exciting to see as well, of course, uh, a Division 1 team, a team that was very competitive at the Major, at the Stockholm Major, going up against a, a Division 2 team in Cybercats that almost... It took one of those promotional slots, of course. Uh, unfortunately, they weren't able to do so, but we see how competitive Cybercats are truly. And it was an incredible game to be able to showcase their talent. I mean, Shigetsu just has another dominant performance as well. He went 19-4 and 17. So the past three games that we've seen from Shigetsu, my guy has gone absolutely crazy. The rest of Cybercats, of course, playing a perfect role in this game as well. And it just felt like... <sighs> what did it feel like? 
Well, you said you said a lot of it, but it did feel like we were looking for kind of the early game aggression really to come out for the the lads on Bet Boom and just something wasn't clicking early on, whether that was, like you said, they didn't prioritize maybe the blink fast enough. That honestly, a support tiny, you can get it at 17 minutes in, 16, a really, really goddamn good tiny uh, blink game. But it, it was just too late. They didn't have the ways to be able to start fights. Multiple times we saw DK Fogos, those black holes were two in a row, really, which was enough to build such a, a drastic net worth lead where it felt like we really saw how difficult it was for them to take team fights when they didn't have the big ultimates. But there were mm. definitely some signs of life here for Bet Boom. There were. And the thing that left me really puzzled was that, I mean, you look at all of Bat Boom's heroes, right? You've got a Nature's Prophet, a Dawnbreaker, Instant Connect, right? A Tiny, loves to roam and get a lot of these pickoffs. Marcy, great at pickoffs. Pango, pretty decent at them as well. Probably the least of the five. But you look at Cybercats, you've got a Sven, a Warlock, an Enigma. They are pretty terrible at making a lot of these pickoffs happen. They're very reactionary with a lot of what they do. So the fact that it felt like Bet Boom were the more pressured team for a lot of this game is really puzzling to me. Like, I really feel like it should have been the exact opposite with Cybercats always needing to be in position to be able to make the turnarounds happen. They were a lot of the time. And again, big props to DK Fogus to being the one to secure those first two big team fights. But uh, yeah, it really felt like Bet Boom could have played a lot more around the fact that, you know, Cybercats, their team fight's great, their cooldowns are long, and they have no... I don't know what the right word is, like, onus, impetus, they have no... Uh, they, they, they didn't have this thing that you had to respond to, you know? You were the thing that they had to respond to. It, I don't know, it, it felt very weird to me. I can't put into words, maybe we'll understand more in game number two. <laughs> what, are you, what are you trying to say here, Dano? <laughs> I'm saying throw to a break. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. What, a, what an incredible game one. This kicks us off for uh, an incredible series for tonight. We've got a elimination series on the line. One team's run will be cut short here. And for Cybercats, they're in prime position. But it's a question of can they continue with this momentum into game two? We'll find out after the break. This is the moment to go. This is the moment to shine. This is the moment to show. Show me the rocks you can climb. This is the moment to feel the path like you legally blind. I can promise this is ours cause we kill for this, kill for this. Pushing buttons, do it quick. Push it off and do it sis. Oh, y'all think we knew to this. Pound for pound, break it down. Watch what we gon' do with this. Teamwork, gotta split it with. Make y'all look like sewages. Gave it everything when we had nothing. Gave it everything when we had nothing. Holding on by a thread, couldn't grab nothing. Since we moved on to a better place. Shine, shine away, away from the shade, boom. But not a weird, uh-huh. Ain't no going back.
troubled minds Let us go down and left a baby Trying to figure out what we're after We never had it back until we're older We couldn't care no more, not any longer And to be jealous guys, we keep on searching But we will never know what we're after Yeah, yeah. No, you know I love you. And you know me, I can't sleep without blame. 
Ps and Bs on stages for their ones gracefully And I got a smile that they hate to see Young black successful, don't life get stressful <laughs> Don't life get stressful, go and vibe out with whoever you next to uh. Live until the morning, sleep until the noon After an incredible game one performance, it is Cybercats in the lead for our lower bracket round two elimination series. Bet Boom backed against the walls, but they are an incredibly strong team, a major team. We saw how they're able to perform at Stockholm. Denog, we've got the Tiny as the first phase, and firstly, I, I just want to be looking, uh, putting all the attention towards the bands as well. Is there really anything that stands out between Cybercats bands or, or Bet Boom's bands? Not really. It really feels like maybe Bet Boom were put off a little bit by the fact that the Enigma was in the game and they had to switch the lanes up level one. It's probably not something that they were wanting to do. I love this pairing so much, man. It's so good. <laughs> you can run it in the off lane. You can run it in the safe lane. It really enables the Razor to be that off lane position three that still gets a lot of farm, that still provides a ton to these team fights and acts like the real anti carry that it used to be. Also kind of limits seconds. what Bet Boom want to play as well. Like maybe they're going to go into the Nature's Prophet. Yep, they do. It just means though that you can change things up. Like you don't max out the static link. Get the Plasma Field and it's still a pretty damn good hero. So I do like the response though from, from Nature's Prophet because the point I was going to bring up about the Razor in particular, the Razor offlane, is everyone is playing this hero incredibly greedy that they are... <laughs> Very, very rarely will an offlane Razor show up to early game fights. They are wanting to farm that BKB. They are wanting to play like a core who is getting that timing. And then that lineup with the Razor, all of a sudden they hit the 17 minute timing where you've got three calls with all these big items and you're just looking to go. But the thing about the Nature's Prophet is you can push the momentum incredibly fast. We didn't really see it in last game, which I'm quite surprised because Bet Boom are an incredible Nature's Profit team, but I feel like they are going to be able to fix some of those mistakes that we saw in the previous game and be able to make sure they don't replicate that in this game. All right, then I'm going to ask you, what uh, what what people have you been watching when that's uh, yeah, when that's the that. case? These razors that don't like to show up to fights. You're not allowed to say Amar. Uh, <laughs> uh, Zai, Chalice... A lot you of think Zai doesn't show up to fights? I feel like he does. I, I think I think uh, first item, I've uh, like I think when you're Radiant working on that BKB, I think there's a lot of emphasis on trying to get that item. Okay. 
I see that. I think as soon as you, th- there is definitely going to be scenarios where if, if there's a fight in your area, if you have the capability to maybe join, you say you've shoved out the lane, you found the hard camp, you have no obligations to get anything, then that's when you could maybe look to join. But I feel like a majority of the time, a, a lot of the, a lot of your um, kind of thought process is just on the farm, getting that item and then, and then looking to go. Sure, I, I can see that. Uh, the reason I ask is because I, I feel like a lot of the times, especially if it's going to be this Marcy Razor lane, oftentimes you just crush the lane hard enough that people are going to rotate to your lane, you secure the tower, and then you've got a little bit more of that freedom where you don't actually need to be showing up to a lot of these fights early. So, you know, maybe I want to see Razor utilized early on when he's still really effective. You know, flat damage stolen is still flat damage stolen no matter what point of the game it is. But earlier on, it's a greater it's a greater percentage of the damage output coming back your way, right? So it's effectively as good as, like, you know, an Enfeeble or this damage reduction because you're able to steal all of their damage. Whereas later on, you might not be able to get up to that stage. You could still get off a few right clicks and have some kind of impact. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point as well about the team looking to play with the Razor because this is a hero that is a little bit immobile at the early stages and keeping to the the end and the, the other side of the map and going back to your lane is difficult but if you actually have a lineup that puts emphasis on on actually going to the razor's lane and playing with him because he more than likely is going to be top three or even the, the most strongest hero off the back of the lane so you want to be playing with him and, and heading to his his area and i'm always a big fan when i see teams do that it's just can they are they in a position to to do so? Do they have heroes that can look to rotate early? On a side note, though, Danog, you get your beloved Winter Wyvern in a, a pretty good Wyvern game. It's a pretty good Wyvern game for sure. I mean, it discourages the tiny from being in the mid roll. It means that it's more likely to be again Gilgit playing it. The thing that I was kind of tossing up is it was either between a Wyvern or a Warlock for me on Cybercats, and the real decision was how much are they trying to enable the Razor by just giving him more damage, and how much are they trying to enable the Razor by preventing someone that's going to stop him from doing damage, if that makes sense. So, like, the Winter Wyvern, one of those few position fives that have that BKB piercing disable. You've got him, you've got the the Bane. I would say the Warlock is a little bit less down that line of thought, but it still exists, right? It's just a, a lot Lo- a, a lot lesser duration of the stun. So I feel like picking the Wyvern, it's a good response to the Tiny, forcing him to support. It's a good response to the Nature's Prophet if he's standing next to his Treants when he's trying to split push. And it's denying it away from Bedroom. So yeah, it's a pretty solid pick. And they have no catch right now. So that's always a, an additional benefit too. And it prevents them from Dawnbreaker. <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's lots of different avenues where it's going to be a really strong pick for them. See what the 17th pick is, though, going to be from Beppu. And they've already got some flex with the Zeus. They're going to have to reroll something, and they do go down the clockwork route. So... It's, it's not great, though. Mm. Like, you hook onto the Wyvern, flies away. You hook onto the Marcy, jumps away. You hook onto the Razor, that's probably the best of the three, right? It is that BKB piercing seconds, disable, lets you get off the cogs, and lets the team be able to create a little bit of space in these Five team fights. Seconds, and you've got that, remaining. right? You've got Nature's Prophet who can TP out, you've got the Zeus with a heavenly jump. Really feel Dirty like this clockwork back. needs that uh, jetpack pretty spirit. early on. Now, this was a hero that just got dumpstered at the Riyadh Masters when, uh, whenever he was picked. I think he won one game, and that was against the uh, Mena Region qualified team that just didn't win a single game. So, we'll see how they're remaining. able to do it. I mean, if anyone is in a hot streak right now, it's Igor. If he's Five able to make it work, then I'm remaining. a believer. They, hmm, they don't have the greatest way to be able to chain control the ember. Like, it really has to be Avatos into... I mean, like, this is a game where you do want the Sprout to leash. Yeah. Yeah, definitely into the Razor, the ember. Something that could be... A bit of an issue as the as the game goes on. Ember should be able to have a pretty good lane though, regardless if it's going to be into a Zeus or a Tiny. You will find your farm regardless, and he can make a lot of these early rotations as well, which is going to be really important. You know, you, you want a hero that's going to be able to to make plays and and be active, especially against a lineup that has the Nature's Prophet. Hmm. I'm just trying to think what carry they want to be going on bed boom here like I, to me it's something that doesn't really care you think they can carry though work. don't don't you is in this like 99 percent of the hawk nature's profit 
I'm sorry. I mean, uh, Cyber Cats. Yeah. Um, Radiant. Sorry, I, I, I thought I said into the Bat Boom roster. Um, like, what are you facing up into it with? They seem to think that this might be a razor pad with a Marcy in the safe back. lane, and it's the Radiant the Beastmaster and the Lycan just for an increased pushing and damage potential. I'm not quite a salt. I think it's going to be something like a Juggernaut that they're going to pick up on Bat Boom's side. You know, pairs together well with a Wyvern for some decent damage in the lane. You can deal with a trance, you can do some good magic damage, you don't need to worry about the magic damage Ten coming out your way. I, I really wouldn't hate to see it. It's just, again, Five something that doesn't care remaining. too much about the clockwork. You're going to be able to run down onto these back lines, and I feel like it's just going to be Bio too much team. pressure with, like, four heroes running at you that Wyman's going to get a free game a lot of the time. I'm trying to see also what Bed Boom are considering here. Regards to looking for position three for Mr. Noticed. Ten are there any flaws that you think they need to cover with this last pick? Mm. Five seconds remaining. Could they Underlord? I feel like that's a little... I think it's you raise terrible. a safe lane, don't you then? Radiant yeah, you do. Okay. It's still not sold. Like, where do you run this? You obviously want to run it into the Ember Spirit, but you can't. That means it's going to be like a, a three clockwork and a five Ten Zeus or, you know, something along those lines. All right, so you're, you don't have a support to be able to deal with the Batrider in the lane if it's going to be off, so you're kind of looking for a Dispel. The Jug still plays okay with the, the Blade Fury. It is a bit annoying with the Lasso to go through. Phantom Lance has always been a very good matchup. Slark as well. You're not going to Slark this game without a doubt. PL also could be a concern. No, not against the Zeus. That's yeah. the thing. And they stay Dawn Breaker. Um... Gives you some global potential. It is going to be that Razor carry as well. So you dodge... I mean, Nature's Prophet lands relatively well into into the Razor. Even even kind of if you do go down that Plasma Field route. A lot of people like the carried Nature's Prophet into the offlane. You're just able to trade incredibly well with him in the lane. The Treants are kind of annoying to deal with. He's unable to kind of combat the CS. It's difficult to close the distance as well. So they, they give it over to the position one. They do regardless get a really strong set up here with the Marcy Razor, like you're mentioning. Doesn't matter if it's going to be off lane or safe lane. It's going to be a great combo. But Cybercats with the last pick, they go for the off lane Dawnbreaker. So see, they didn't have as much success on it from Bet Boom in a game one. Do you, what are your thoughts over the last pick Dawn? I think it's just a solid laner. You know, it's one of those ways to be able to clear out the Nature's Prophet Treants. Um, you're not as vulnerable about the clockwork going in onto you because it's just an echo clockwork. You can just toss out the Celestial Hammer if you do get caught out. Same sort of thing with the Sprout. So, I mean, it's a solid enough pick for sure. I'm really looking to focus up onto this, uh, this Cybercat safe lane. The Marcy Razor, I want to see some Plasma Field level 1. I want to see them nuking down the Creep Wave as quickly as they can, hitting that level 2 prior to the Tiny and the Bat Rider, and then looking to go for a kill immediately once they reach that point. I am quite concerned that this Bat Rider might just take over this game. I, the only true answer they have is probably Winter's Curse on any jump in from the, the lasso. So then the rest of Bet Boom can't really dive inside and be able to blow a hero up. Maybe the damage from afar could be enough with like the Zeus and the Furion has enough range. But I, I really feel like this Batrider pick is going to prove to be a, an incredible issue for the lads on Cybercats. Okay, we'll see. I mean, uh, the the... The team fights are going to be difficult, right? Because if you just lasso someone and hold them in place for Dahak to be able to hit, for the Zeus to be able to get off the Thunder Gods, the Nimbus, blah, 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 you're going to have the Solar Guardian there for that turnaround potential. And it's not like they have any... I guess they have the Tiny. I was about to say they don't have any immediate follow-up for, for that sort of situation. But if you're dragging him towards and away from the Solar Guardian, maybe you drag him a little bit too close to the Nature's Prophet, and that's where you get that Winter's Curse off. That's where you can actually turn around this team fight in its entirety. We'll see how this second game is able to pan out. Cybercats one game away of knocking Bet Boom out of the qualifiers and moving on to the lower bracket semi-finals.
They're going to face the winner of Nami, Navi against Namiga. And Navi, they are up one game as well in that series. That's the merged organization, Nami. Nami. Namiga. Let's go, Dahak. Uh-oh, not a good position for the Nature's Prophet to be in. And with Faisal, the movement speed slow. Will come out an easy way to close the distance as Eagle finds first blood. Sights you love to see for a position too. Oh, they block the Ancients as well. Cheeky. 30 seconds to battle. Don't you love 24% movement speed slow at level 1 on the Celestial Hammer plus all that damage? What do you mean? There's nothing wrong with this ability. I feel like if they just reduced its cast range, it would be okay at level 1. Like, make the scaling up a little bit more devastating. No, 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 no. This, this, this ability doesn't even have to be nerfed. What are you saying? Come on, 700 nice, cast range level 1, thanks. Come on now. Thornbreaker, nothing wrong at all. There's gonna be a lot of damage out of Gilga and Suneko. Shigetsu, can they get this kill actually? Battery Salt still got half duration left. It looks like they might be able to. Alrighty. The boys ain't there. The lads are gone. He needs to be there. Lads. The Hark has once again switched up the lanes. Really wanting to lane into this Razor. Not sure how super confident yeah. I am in that, but we'll see. We'll see how it ends up going. Again, it's really going to be dependent on <laughs> if you hit that level what? two quicker. <laughs> Just an instant toss. Um, you, know, hey, you may as well use the mana, right? I suppose. I think this is much different from playing it in the other lane, though. Like I mentioned, Nature's Prophet, you're, you're pretty happy with laning into a Razor. The issue is, though, is that it's a Nature's Prophet in the off lane, and you do not have... Uh, the Razor is going to have the full length of the lane to be able to chase down the Nature's Prophet, whereas if you're in the off lane, you don't have that capability, and you also have a, a Marcy anyway. So this could be pretty scary for Dahak. Could be for sure. I mean, it really depends on what they're doing. Like, Gilgir right now is doing the exact thing that you need to do. Make sure he's pulling behind the wave. This is Ooh. probably something that Dahak, I don't want to say he learned it from Tundra, but this is Tundra's MO. This is what they do every single game that they're playing on Dire if they get the opportunity to look to try and reset the equilibrium, farm super safely behind the tower when they're in a, a difficult lane, but they're not doing it quite perfectly. The tower ended up clearing out a couple of those creeps, which means it's just going to push back up into Cybercat's favor. Gilgars. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Not, what the... All right, well, it's going to reveal there's a ward up there. But she gets... She should be able to get a decent amount of damage into the tiny. Is he losing creeps, though? One creep's not going to be lost. Did he miss one? Don't think so. Love to see it. Right, how are the other lanes looking at the moment? Mid, nothing crazy. Here you go on Lyle. We're really going to be looking at the level sixes though. Lyle for his impact into the side lanes and Igor as well from being able to help out with the TP rotation or some of the power runes as well. Oh no, it not the water rune denied by a tree. <laughs> Alright, so I think I, I think I cracked the code as to why oh, Simon no. Cats won that game one. Oh god, let's hear it. All right, so in the lobby, I had a look at what these uh, players' pub names were. And it really gives you a, a bit of a, a magnifying glass into the mental state. So uh, it was all positive vibes on Cybercat's side. I'll, I'll hold off for a second as Gilgir might be getting a toss back onto H2O. Uh, doesn't seem like it. Uh, so basically, Igor, his name, Big Boss Shigetsu. So big positive <laughs> vibes, wanting to amp up his teammate. But uh, it wasn't quite so positive on the side of Bet Boom. Gilgir's name was Yatoro God MMR Donor. Very negative. Not uh, not a very nice boy. Very toxic. And noticed was Bot Major. So I wonder if that's in reference to Force Major that's suddenly not playing with them, or if it's just a little bit of lighthearted banter. I in any case, it's not the same as saying Bottom lane. Big Boss Shigetsu. Oh, easy TP up. He's, uh, I'm pretty sure he's been bot major for a little bit of time. There you got a big kill onto Notice top lane. All right, DK Fogos and, and Faisal in combination together. Beautifully done. Dire structures are fortified. <laughs> I think I've seen the, uh, the bot major name a couple of times. 
Wait, wait, okay. he, he did play yesterday as well, so he, my man's probably uh, he's, he's got stuff on today. Oh, there's two bounty runes here. Where are we looking? I'll tell you. Large just took both. I can do with more of that. Igor should be able to secure at least one of the water runes this time. No tree in place to be able to disrupt that. Go bottom. He's just going to walk Let on back. Nah, nah, it's fine. Dadaya. The nice thing about watching all the replays for the major, I'm seeing that the voice line meta. There are teams that favor more voice lines over the other. Don't ask me to say what, because <laughs> I don't remember. I but... just want to know what the meta is in your mind. <laughs> no, it's uh, uh, the Hawk. Have they got the stun still? The Hawk, no, TP still on cooldown. Gig is going to toss him under the tower. Look at the tree blocks Body as well. Blocks. Oh, that's perfect from the Hawk, but Shigetsu's just going to stand his ground and look to get the kill instead, but he's got the movement speed. H2O would jump on forward, but they'll both die. Oh, no, Shigetsu gets the courier. He will end up falling. That's a bit of a refresh in the resources. Top lane noticed he's playing his distance away from Fogos. A beautiful flame break back into the Firefly. Phasor almost takes out as well, but both position threes will be expended. This is what we come to expect from the Eastern European, though. A little bit more aggressive than what we saw at the start of that game, number one. Immediately, though, Gilgir is going to be in a bit of a rough spot. Doesn't have the mana to be able to get off that avalanche and probably end up going down here. I don't know, he's got the movement speed. Dude. <laughs> Oh my lord, it's for some- no, not the tower, okay. For some reason, the Sentinel Conqueror is just bloody blocking Shigetsu. I thought he wasn't going to, uh, to close the distance ever. He gets a kill in the end. Nothing crazy going on. Top lane, Seneko. We got Thunder Gods, we do have Thunder Gods. But Seneko hasn't brought anyone down low enough to be able to utilize that ultimate. Do have those uh, Tranquil Boots finished up there by Notice, though. So, going to enable him to stay in this lane a little bit more frequently. Go for some of those individual dives. Five as well. Big damage ramp up with that Sticky Napalm. Level 1 feels so useless, so I was a little bit surprised that he opted to try and go for that. That kill previously ended up dying to in the, the river Eagle. Breaker combo. Double Remnants, but he can utilize all the mana because he just picked up a regen rune. Meanwhile, bottom lane, they scout out the Shigetsu solo. The support's putting the emphasis on moving towards the power runes, but H2 is instantly down to bottom, and what a goddamn hero. Meanwhile, DK Fogus as well, he's able to survive the deep tower dive, gets the kill, and will, of course, come at a cost, though, Zeus utilizing the Thunder God's Wrath, being able to, to bring Kim down, so the first ultimate of the game for the Zeus, but this is big, you're slowing him down. Oh, what are we, what's going on? They messed up the bottle refill as well, so Lyle had it in the backpack, moved it in, was on cooldown, so Neko TP'd in, didn't get the refill, so yeah, things not going super ideally for Beth Boom to begin this game. The Hawk again, do that, oh my, this hero. He just goes the distance so fast, but the avalanche, just enough from Gilgir. Beautiful spell casting it onto multiple heroes, and that was just enough to offset some of the damage. Do you see why I like this hero combination now? Oh, I know. Do you see why I never shut up now, about it? I, dude, I'm, I never doubted this combo. I know it's dumb. I just see how far he just jumped in, though? Like, yeah. Yep. Cool here. Yeah. I'm aware. Whee! He just jumps in the middle. There's nothing they can do about it. That's <laughs> crazy. Any hero that, like, literally your supports all three skills synergize perfectly with what you want to do is just busted. Our uh, toolkit's broken. Toolkit and, and the values of the toolkit as well. Like, rebound yeah. having, what, 45% movement speed at one mm -hmm. level for five seconds? Yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's the values we're speaking about. Just the numbers are too good and the concept of what the hero does, but... Good backstep here by Gilgir. Perfectly done. So able to position to phase off. They... Looks like the rest of the team from Cybercats are putting the, the importance on trying to take away the, the stack in the jungle. Eagle will also get Illusion Rune or being around the top side. I wonder how much more they're going to lean into Gilgir getting the Blink Dagger this game. Because they, they do have a little bit of pick off with the Bat Rider and with the Clockwork, so maybe it's not quite as necessary, but it can never be a bad thing, right? I, I feel lane, like Clock H2O. is probably... I don't... This is incredibly deep, and the instant use of the lasso to cancel that TK Focus is swash, and now to Hawks, even going to look to yeah, TP in as well, but the rotation 
Eagle's going to look to make his way top lane to provide some assistance, but I don't know if the Emperor can do it himself. The Hawk's going to look for a TPR. H2O hey, can't get in range for the Dispose, but it looks like they should be able to get a consolation prize in Seneco's life. It was very optimistic using that Solar Guardian there as well when he's inside of the Battery Assault Cogs combo. But Dyer's well, top tower it's a little unfortunate that they're not able to convert onto the Dyer's Nature's Profit, of course. And this time around to Huck, he's going into the Midas. He wants to be able to play for that later stages of the game. Obviously, the laning stage didn't go too well for him. Already a thousand net worth behind this Razor. Do you feel Dyer's like, because it seems like the read for the Hawk is maybe that he believes he can outscale Cybercats. Are you in agreement with that? Or is it maybe something that he's just going to look to find like a three item timing a little bit faster than Cybercats? I really don't think he can outscale them, to be honest. I, I feel like you're in a position with these support duos that you're going to be in a position where Prophet's not free to just stand there and right click. You can dispose out of the, the Sprout. You can curse him when he's trying to BKB and right click you. He doesn't want to go a Lincoln Sphere. So I feel like the your cause job, like in a vacuum, Prophet might be able to outcarry the others, but this isn't a one to one game. It does seem like really the only hero on Bet Boom having a good time is, is Lyle at the moment. 30 net worth. The big reason why they have this 2,000 net worth lead is all the cores on Cybercats being able to find their farm. So we'll see what they're able to do with Lol. Radiant's bottom tower they... Is under attack. they do kind of have some difficulty with getting up to the Zeus. I mean, this Heavenly Jump is a crazy ability. I think it's going to be really important, though, from Bedroom to always show numbers to be able to defend this T1 tower. Because if you are going down this Midas route on the Furion, then you are going to need as much as your jungle as you can Radiant's possibly get to, to farm for... Attack. At least the early game. Yeah, to me it really feels like the time where they're actually going to be able to go onto the Zeus is once you get a few more points into that Searing Chains, because by that stage, there's no... Unless the Tiny's in the perfect spot, there's no relocation for the Zeus. You can't heavily jump away if you've got that Searing Chains onto you. I believe... I, I think Radiant scanned... Yeah, they scanned their tree line, so they know that Guild Gear wrapped all the way around. It was, it was a really cool read. It almost paid off. Multiple heroes TPing down. It looks like somehow Bet Boom were... Able to catch a, a whiff of that, so they will get out of harm's way. Meanwhile, they're hunting top, but notice is still quite some time away from the blink deck. I haven't seen them put a lot of emphasis on stacking the ancients. In fact, I have seen Tahak even farming it as well. So it's going to be a, a bit of time till they really get that blink online for noticed. Oopsies, Zeus. He's going to be cut off for the secret shop. Yeah, Igor and H do him. DK focused to the last second with the Solar Guardian as well. That was the Unleash, the first usage of the game. And they're going to connect to Shigetsu as well as Igor. He's actually getting aggressive. Now he doesn't have too much in mana to play with. They do have to respect the rotations coming out. Hey, Shua is going to jump to Tahak and, and try and take the Nature's Prophet out of the equation. But it's not enough as notice he just flies over. Gets the damage required to kill off the position two onto Cybercats. And they're still diving incredibly deep. She gets it with the damage stolen up to 68, so they'll get the kill onto Notice's Batrider. But the respawns are starting to come out. Lull back in the equation. A Thunder God's Wrath, not enough to get the kill. Another curse. And buy some valuable seconds for the lads on Cybercats to be able to reposition. They'll sacrifice DK Fogos, but multiple members on Cybercats will make it out. Well, actually, maybe not H Duo. As the Hawk's going to be able to TP in the Sprout. Not even required is Gilgit can get the combo out. But they got to be cautious, though. Another person wandering a, a little bit too mindlessly inside the jungle as she gets through up to a dominating streak in our second game. They're just giving way too much gold over Shigetsu. Like, you, you can't allow this guy to just continue to farm, get these free pickoffs. That was a kill onto the Tiny that, again, we don't want another game where Gilgir is getting this 23-minute blink dagger. Like, honestly, even, like, 18 minutes is too late, to be honest, and it feels like that's going to be the best-case scenario for himself. Radiant structures are fortified. Popping the glyph, really wanting to put a little bit more pressure onto this tower, protecting the siege creep. Phasor in position as well to be able to connect through, but they see the tiny T being in. Things starting to come out. No point in the cold embrace to assist with this push, though. Ooh. Very close to getting the kill. Drop the double remnant for it. Eagles, he's got no remnants now. He's chilling. They do see notice top. Do you think they can make a play? 
A, a couple of heroes TP bottom. Is it, do they have room maybe to quickly smoke the top, or are you just you chilling at the moment for Cybercats? I think you're fine to just wait. Like, there's nothing really mm, dire about needing to take him out. Razor still 800 or so gold away from that BKB, so I think the next attempt that you make, it needs to convert into an objective. It's going to be around that mid lane. <laughs> you're about to have a BKB as well, and she gets to. Oh, notice! There we go! There's the blink! The Solar Guardians at the ready, though. The bonus health is not enough. They bring down Eagle, but they got to make sure they don't clump up as Phasor. Looking to enter the fight with the Winter's Curse, but Bet Boom, they do an incredible job to play their distance, but unfortunately, H2O, he will go down to the last tower right click. So, an incredible reveal of the Blink Dagger from Noticed. Very, very nicely done. Getting the, the most important hero in my eyes as well. Delaying out that Maelstrom timing, meaning that you don't have as easy of a way to be able to address the Hark if he does decide to go down this split push route. You can see just wanting to hold on to all that gold. Really wants to Radiance be able to pick up that Aghanim Shard for himself attack. as quickly as possible. Radiance bottom tower has fallen. See... But at the moment, just content with still getting their farm, though. I mean, you got the ultimates on cooldown, so... The Hark really hasn't left this triangle. His second in net worth, though, so he's starting to catch back up. Dyer's Levels are a bit of an issue at the moment attack. for the Nature's Prophet. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. I mean, Gilga is still continuing to roam around, I suppose, just wanting to secure that bounty rune. I love the fact that it seems like they've given him a lot more of this farming space this time around. He's going to be able to not claim the full creep wave, but he's been stacking for himself. He's been claiming his own creeps. I like this a whole lot more because it's going to enable them to get those great pickoffs onto people like the Ember Spirit. You have to be worried, though, that Cybercats are soon ready to fight. BKB on Shigetsu, Maelstrom completed onto Eagle, and you are one component away from the BKB on, on DK Fogus as well, so... Cybercats, they're going to have a, a big window to be able to succeed in this next fight. Look at that from the Hawk, though. It's a very interesting ward that's going to be placed kind of behind the T1 tower. tower. I mean, this is telling me that they're looking to gear up for an eventual push Radiant or maybe even set up to, to get a pick off by the triangle. I think it's all about killing the Wyvern. Kill the Wyvern to start these Dyer's team fights, take the mid tower, tower take their attack. ancients. They know by the movements that aren't happening by Cybercats that Dahak has free reign to be able to play around this area. And there's, honestly, there's no reason to. They see him with the ward area. by the river. Notice that Gen's able to get the lasso off before the first, the last swipe. Oh, beautiful That's taunt from Phasor. Gets the Zeus as well. Now, instantly, Igor is going to rend them into the middle. The Zeus at least is able to get a, a bunch of abilities off before he dies. So that'll secure the kill. On to DK Fogos, but in the end, it is a two for one, and Cybercats, they will take that trade. And you hit the important timings as well. Maelstrom now for the Ember, Blink Dagger for the Winter Wyvern. Honestly, Phasor's positioning has been perfect so far to be able to get off a lot of these curses. He hasn't had that additional tool to be able to play around with, and now he's got it. So he could just play super far onto the back lines that it feels like Dahak is going to need to go like a really... I don't think Orc is an unorthodox item for the Nature's Prophet, but these days it kind of is because it doesn't give you that intelligence anymore. And that's what you really need to be able to truly scale as this int carry. Yeah, I, I see it very rarely, like maybe one out of ten games, if that. It's kind of feels like this is the one to me. Yeah, you're going to need some way to really deal with the Winter Wyvern. It's always going to be this big issue with the counter initiation. Oh, seeing how it's duo be chased down. You'll give it the blink. No one else is going to be in toss range. Oh, notice he tried to blink in, but Gilgit was not patient enough. Maybe the communication wasn't there instead. So that is a, that's a pretty big reveal, and they don't get anything out of it. Now rating can play accordingly. Oh, a quick silver amulet picked up. By the Dyer, it's probably one of the things that Batrider loves to play around the most. So it gives them just so much more of that map movement. Still going to continue holding on to the wind lace, going into the drums. Yeah, loving this build from Notice. Do it with flair. Pretty... The Hawks on 
They see the hawk. Hang on, the hawk? He tried to kill the courier. I I'm not sure if they scouted out his infantry though. Any more Phasor is going to go down mid lane, so... And they get the jump in as well from the Batrider. Targeting Eagle. The burst, it's going to be enough before the Solar Guard and the reactions come out from Cybercats and Gilk is in as well with the combo. As Bat Boom swarm underneath the tier 1 tower. They get four heroes. No remorse coming out from the lads on Die. A beautiful team fight. I've been complimenting his position all early game, but Phasor, what the Radiant's heck were you doing? He was standing inside the river when the enemy's tier 1 tower is still alive and you didn't have the vision control of the area. That seems like a very odd choice for him to just get caught out like that, and that's the reason they lost the team fight. Radiant's if they have the curse, that doesn't happen. It was also just a little bit of distraction game and away from the Hawk. They saw him trying to kill the Corys. Two heroes started to move to him and instead Radiant's of a middle tower is under posturing attack. aggressively around the mid lane. They went. Didn't have that opportunity to be able to protect the Wyvern. We see how much of an issue it can be if this hero is not getting his abilities off in the fights. And that's why you go on the Blink Dagger again, right? Like, you can go the Blink Dagger all you want, but you gotta use it correctly. You gotta play well back and Oh, they ended up smoking underneath that ward. Gilgir, he scouted it out entirely, and he's gonna back off. And that worth leaders completely swung down. Look at that. And we were saying it was 3,000 early on for Cybercats, but Bepum just farms. They've also taken really strategic fights where they know they have the advantage. Shigetsu could still do it for his boys, though. Like, he is the one that they need to be playing around. He's got BKB. He's the most farm calm in the game. He's the highest level in the game outside of Lyle. Like, he, he is able to hog. put his team on his They've got a sentry already placed. Die, they are starting to move on top though, so they've got to be pretty fast to get rid of the Hawk. Maybe with the damage coming out from H2, it's going to be not, but again, no the way. Avalanche! Oh my, Gilgir again! Down to the south though, Shigetsu. They don't even get the clockwork as well. He too is also able to TP up, man. What an escape from Hellraisers, and they're going to turn it back around. Shigetsu playing with a little bit of bonus health. Coming out for the one, the Hawk's going to rejoin the engagement with the teleport and Bet Boom. Some really good movements coming out from them. They're going to find two heroes, and they're on the prowl for more as well. H2O, random avalanche, kill Gip. Nah, he's not going to go for it. Oh, how good was that by Gilgir, though? If he's not there with that triple avalanche, you don't get away on the Nature's Prophet. Just the, the small things, right? The Sprout giving the lack of vision to be able to get off the Dispose. Went a little bit of a different route. It looks like uh, H2O is going maybe towards a four-star for himself, but he's going for the Blink Dagger queued up after the Fluffy Hat. Obviously doesn't have the Aether Lens, so wasn't able to get the Cast Range there. Wasn't able to get the Curse off in time. Just so many minuscule things turning that in Betboo's favor. The items continuing to be accumulated. Silver's Edge now completed onto the Hawk. Lyle is playing with the, the Yule Scepter defensively now, if required. I mean, he's got Ag Shard as well for the bonus damage. Notice is, I think almost got a BKB. Yep, almost completed that last component. So we are going to be looking at a very scary Ages timing soon for Betboom. So does Igor, though. He's almost been able to pick up that BKB for himself. Still a Ring of Aquila in the base, as well as a Philosopher's Stone, which I'm quite surprised no one's holding on to right now on the Cybercats lineup. What's a Wyvern got? Crappy pig pole. You need them four stuffs, man. You need to get out of Sprout, you need to get out of Cogs, you need to get away from a Batrider. Radiance top tower is under attack. Yeah, it might take a bit too long until they're able to get that item. So big window here for those defensive items to be able to protect the supports. Do it with flare. We really haven't seen Cybercats get aggressive in quite some time. It does feel like their lanes, which is interesting because they have pretty strong heroes to be able to shove the side lanes, but I think the concern is just the fact they have no aggressive wards to play with. Dyer have done a really good job at dewarding the map and... With how scary it is, you're, you're going to multiple heroes that can find pickoffs. He smoked well back, not wanting to be caught out under another potential smoke. Kill gear though, 
He's the one sitting on the front lines in his own smoke. Trying to catch them out as they walk around to the left-hand side. Using Tahak as a little bit of bait Otis here. is in. He's going to be in with the combo. They get the Winter's Curse before Kilgi is going to be able to stop that in. It's tracked with the damage. It's been dealt. They'll get rid of the Bat Rider. They're going to look to turn to Seneco next. But a four stuff down to the south will make him work for it. But in the end, we see what can happen. Faisal... When it gets the curse off in the middle of the fight, it can be very difficult for Bet Boom to target one hero down. Those tiny little movements, right? Making sure they were playing around the left side of the trees, not wanting to give away their position too easily. And you know, those kills are worth a lot. It wasn't any streaks, but it's going to the right sort of people. The Razor able to pick that one up. I believe that's the Lincoln's completed for himself now as well. So even with that BKB on, you're not going to be able to be focused down first in a lot of these engagements. And they are getting their farm, even though it is a bit of a deficit here for Cybercats. You got Lincoln's completed now for the Razor, or mid lane, lol. Great, your Scepter. And now Gilgit could look for the toss as soon as notice. Teep is in, instead he's going to chuck him directly up in the air. Dieback. Yeah, that's a dieback 60 seconds without H-Duo. Another ward lost as well. Gilgit! Ooh, beautiful avalanche, but she gets to, is that really the target? Lyle's going to be able to break the static link, but down to the right side. Oh, they're crumbling as DK Fogos is going to be in with the combo. The Starbreaker is huge to get rid of two heroes on Bet Boom. Even the curse back up now as well for Wyvern. So you can see Faisal's trying to look for that plus one, but playing around the fact that it's nighttime as well as under the cover of the invisibility was to Hark. Yeah, I agree. It was a little bit of an odd decision to want to get that static link in onto the Zeus. It really does feel like you need that uh, that Ember Spirit there to be able to convert that into something more. But of course, he's got the Yule Scepter as well, so a little bit of that defensive capabilities for Lal. Interesting. He's going full stuff as well from Shigetsu. I was thinking, well, Seneca is under award at the moment. He's got the heart to the right. I don't believe the Furance wanting to reveal his position, though. Seneco, no way. Okay. Eagle, but not playing with the remnants. And now that they've got no Thunder Gods for vision, Seneco's back no in. BKB's on cooldown. Remnant. Oh, he's still, oh, okay. He's got one used defensively. He's going to be fine. Faisal's out as well. Very nicely done. He'll be here looking to try and get the quick pick off. <laughs> Link digger available, but no, won't be able to find him. Rock it on. I was thinking before that the Razor might consider going down a Blink, just so you can jump in, Blink, BKB, Blinkins protect you, get on top of the Nature's Prophet and, and soak away all his damage. Because Furon is very immobile and you, you, you hate when people are on top of you, but I don't know if you want to go down that route now with a, a four staff. Of course, the Blink would come out much later on, like fourth, fifth item, but I think even now with him going Hurricane Pike, it might be a bit awkward with the build. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it really... To me, it feels like they're waiting for this level 20 on the Razor. That extra movement speed that you get from the Storm Surge is just insane. It means that you could potentially also Incoming. look to sell your boots later on into the game and go like a, a Swift Blink route, just because it's going to make up for that lack of movement speed. Sure. Smoke oh. undetected this time around. Faisal can be the one to reveal it from the trees if he just wants to keep oh. tossing out that Splinter Blast. Oh, Someone's going to need to do something. Water my high gun. Oh, he's going to be able to scout at this smoke and also... That's a, I mean, tail. to me, that's a little bit of a rookie error, you know, like just keeping all of those, what, 20 <laughs> triads hitting into the tower. I think Faisal could have at least launched a splinter blast from the trees because you probably expect that he's going to be playing around that area anyway. Oh, they might catch out the Wyvern. Going to be able to unnoticed. They got Seneco to be able to follow up as well. Meanwhile, top lane though, Kilgi's onto Igor. Who's onto who at the moment? The Solar Guard needs to be able to follow up as well to Hawk. He's gonna be okay under the cover of the beat uh, under the cover of the invis. Oh, we'll get some distance away. And the river low. H2 is gonna be able to jump on forward. They're right next to a T1 tower, so the TPs are gonna come out pretty fast. But they don't have a lasso to be able to hold back she gets it for the moment. And now she gets her, he can charge on forward to Tahak as well with the static link. It's already on cooldown though, so it's going to be relying oh, on the ultimate. But Tahak, once connect. again, they don't have the detection. Just out of range to be able to catch up the Zeus and unnoticed as well. 
But the flying mobility, he too will escape, so somehow Bet Boom only lose the Zeus. Yeah, Marcy was just out of range when she used the dust to be able to connect in onto the Nature's Prophet. That would have been such a huge win if they were able to take out this Nature's Prophet and well, you look at that, he's going into a nullifier. Just really wanting to, I suppose, get rid of the, the sidekick, be able to get rid of the flame guard as well. Just that constant spell, the four staffs. Just make sure that you're able to keep the main target inside of the cogs as much as possible. Does nullifier avoid Lincolns? I can't remember. It's been way too long since I've seen this item, I'll be honest. <laughs> Oh Actually, my god. It up, not going the Hurricane Pike on Shigetsu. Going straight into the Refresher. I like it. Just another Lincolns to get through. Another four staff usage. Another BKB. Never a bad option. No, sir, indeed. We've seen this item be very core on Razors for quite some time, but still, Cybercats, they haven't been able to crack the network. Like, they've stalled out at growing for Bedroom, which is definitely a good sign. But what do we need to see them do to be able to crack this lead? Is there any items we're waiting for? That perfect team fight that you're hoping they can set up somewhere? I'd say you can't wait for the refresher on the Razor. It's going to be too long. And Roshan's going to be an immediate respawn as well. Uh, so that's a, that's a Oh aspect. no! <laughs> Other good Agshard. Was he already spinning? Is that he, what, what happened? He was, but I think he jumped after the second spin. So he jumped when the stun was going to come out and Molly got stunned. Oh, it feels bad. Uh, what yeah. we're waiting for is the uh, Lincolns on the Ember Spirit. It's just going to enable him to feel a lot safer in a lot of these engagements. Even just being caught inside the Sprout is going to become a bigger deal later yeah, on. So if you're able to avoid that uh, once MP hits level 20, you just feel so much more confident in being able to zip in and out around these team fights. <sighs> Smoke up. They're not going to wait for these items. They don't have the greatest spot to smoke to, though. Bottom's completely shoved out and no one is home. So a bit of an awkward movement coming out from Cybercats. Hopefully considering that's where DK Focus is playing. Maybe expecting that a move was about to happen in, in onto him. But, uh, yeah, like you said, not going to result in anything too significant. Level 20 picked up by him, so... Maybe that Solar Guardian radius is the way that he wants to go. No, nope, never mind. Luminosity attacks. Really wanting to be that right-clicking threat. I suppose his build kind of indicates that as well. Definitely be someone that scales well into the late game. Could see the potential of the Basher come out. It's all on Lincolns for the moment on Cybercats. Die, they're just getting whatever they want in the farm. We really haven't seen Radiant be able to pierce through the enemy side of the map for quite some time. I don't think they feel safe doing it until they have this Lincolns though. Now Igor's got it. So maybe now is where they make that true move. But all the while, lanes are being pushed in. You know, you've got maybe a Zeus, you've got a even a clockwork to be able to assist with it. Of course, Nature's Prophet. Bepum are fine with waiting a little bit more because like I was saying before, that level 20 coming up very shortly for the Nature's Prophet. Oh, focus. oh my lord. Notice it. Can he catch up? A double four stuff to close the distance. Again, great use of the Star Breaker. That was so awkward. Just a random sticky. I don't know if Notice had some prior knowledge of the Dawnbreaker playing in... Oh, Seneca in the river? No, just pump faking the hook shot. <laughs> Gives him a tip as well. Alright, the Hawk's 20. The Hawk's got Nullifier. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. And they're going. Radiant DK be on cooldown for DK. You'll get. Not a great fortify, though. They didn't see the duration left on the tree, and so it's actually oh going to be pretty wasted. Oh, my lord! DK Focus! Dude, what are your reactions, good sir? Noticed? I think they pass over to the gem to kill get Beautiful individual plays coming out. It's noticed. No way this guy doesn't die. Alright, he runs back into Eagle. So they will get the kill. Finally, the tower is going to go down as well. That was really cute, though. He handed over the gem as Tiny was looking to evade out from the area. Really does feel like, though, take this mid tower, go on into Roche. It's up. Such a big objective to be able to secure. A lot of those TPs can still look to come back towards this mid lane. As it starts to get pinged out. Bet boom, they're aware. Using the rocket flare to full effect. Loving the fact that he did choose to go for that jetpack route as well on Seneco. He's gone and, and it's off. put the, the gem into the stash for himself as well.
eagle? They're gonna soul. Hmm. Okay. No soul at Guardian now. He wanted to kill the tower. He's like, <laughs> oh, it's just a couple of hits, and then they're like, no, you will not do that. All right. I wasted my ult, and I gotta get something out of it at least. Let me just get some smacks in. It does feel like a little bit of a missed opportunity for Cybercats, though, doesn't it? You get this big kill onto the Bat Rider, and you don't get anything else out of it. Not even a tier one mid. Good old Furion, man. It's just their side lanes are such an issue. Which, again, it shouldn't be. You have an Ember and a Dawnbreaker. Uh, a Wyvern's mm -hmm. incredibly good. Like, they have heroes that can deal with the side lanes, but just something seems to be not clicking at the moment with their, with their movements. I've been able to get some vision up, though. So, if Beth Boom do decide to head up towards this Roche Pit, they're going to end up revealing themselves. Shigetsu, of course, has the Refresher Orb now, so so much more potent in a lot of these team fights. Arcane Orb. Shigetsu's got to be cautious. Oh. oh, he hooked the creep. <laughs> awesome, there you go. Hey, two is going to be in. That one is a pretty big kill if they can bring him down. They're going to be able to do so with ease. The goddamn cog, so she gets you got to force up, brother. He's going to use it later on. Instead, they'll utilize their curse to cancel Tiny's TP. They They'll need to move it. this into the pit, though. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. Now, that arcane rune's a little bit obnoxious, but uh, well, they're actually going to back off completely. Kind of surprising again. I, I guess just this <laughs> massive army coming down block, but, uh, you know, Ember Spirit with the uh, Maelstrom is going to make pretty quick work of that. Got Cloak of Flames as well to be able to help out. They are getting a lot of farm with all the trains. Uh, could the hog? Uh, with the leash, maybe. You see the damage? He's got a decent amount of armor. Nimbus gonna come out as well, but now the hog might be in some trouble. Solar Guardian gets the plus one, the leash once again. The hog's gonna go for a TP out and have fun canceling that. So silly. What do you mean? Well, it's a cool talent. <laughs> now instead they're the ones that are going to be able to take this uh yeah maybe just staying a little bit too long down around that bottom side was ember i mean he, he had a remnant back up towards the uh the roche pit but they're just giving away this roshan for free refresh this it. down i don't i don't think they can contest this nope. i think you're going to lose multiple heroes if you go for this <laughs> mm -hmm. maybe a phrases 25 which you just got but uh, doesn't feel like it. Full on smoke, but feels like it might be trying to catch one of the stragglers. Alright, Aegis picked up onto the Hawk. Ag shot it, and you're not going to leave it in the pit again, are you, lads? Not again. They did ping it, so. Gilk is like, yes, my time has come. Really? No. Surely it's bats. Bats? Dude, that one's horrible. Bro, everyone else has it. It's either a tiny support or a bat. I'd rather what a tiny. I'd rather a tiny. Ugh. Tiny with <laughs> no attack speed. Mid lane, Seneco. You, you take whatever plus one you can get. Did he get it? Did the bat? Oh, yeah. dude, it's... You, it, what are you, you're not right clicking. Occasionally you are. You're not just a lasso bot. You're, you're not, you're not, sure, but you've got other abilities. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> notice he's right-clicking these pies. I swear to God. <laughs> oh, no. I think he's like, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm clutching at straws Go here. Go Witchblade. Because, again, maybe. Uh, but, like, you're up against so many Lincolns. Hopefully an eagle might be in some trouble. They're going to have to hark nearby as well, but maybe they're just baiting Eagle. Right, Force off out with the curse as well, along with the Solar Guardian. But to hark, he's only being tickled. We'll turn it back around thanks to the Satanic Life Tilt, but Eagle wants to get out. Mimoto to the Secret Shop, though, Shigetsu is able to cancel the line of Guild Gear. Can Tahak win the man fight? Shigetsu has got the Static Link back up in the arsenal. They're going to take away too much damage for Tahak to be able to trade. They're looking to evade. They don't want to stick around for the respawn, or do they? Buyback's coming out from H2O. They'll instantly turn it back around. It's H2O's got the jump in as well, straight on top of Lars' location. They need to fall up. They need the gap close, and Eagle is there. A perfect timing with the double remnant into the river. Static Link is back up to Shigetsu. They're going to kite the BKB. As soon as it expires, there is a window to jump back in. 
patience from Cybercat just waiting for that opportunity. They're giving a lot of respect over to Tahag, but no one feels comfortable to jump onto the, the Nature's Prophet. I don't know about that choice to run Radiant's back underneath tower, the Nimbus after, tower. you know, you're already caught, you got that extra Lightning Bolt mini stun. It was just a little odd, and the dieback ends up being expended for it. Oh, again, it's just these small little things. It was a great curse coming through again to be able to disrupt the initial part of that team fight. But the most important outcome of that was Zeus hitting level 25 AoE Lightning Bolt now. So it's a great way to just dish out even more of that consistent damage in these engagements. Already so much. Uh, wonder if anyone's going to hold on to that telescope on Bet Boom's side. Top lane, Eagle. Considering about TPing in onto the Hawk. I'd use telescope if I was noticed, for sure. Mm. Bro, you buff up your Zeus, you buff up your Tiny, more attack range for the Hawk, longer lasso. Like, it, yeah, the damage is nice, but. Zeus does the damage. You don't need to worry about damage at this stage as the Batrider. I wonder if he... Do you feel like he has mana issues? Like, the... The mini yours is only good for us, really, the chains, right? There's nothing else. I guess the slow from Thorn, but... I mean, and the wyvern, and it gets rid of that. Yeah. I've... I don't know if you're holding it this late for four mana region, though. It's the damage. It does a deceptive amount of damage sure. in team fights. How much is it? We'll hold that uh, thought. 200. We've got a great higher ground ward. Fortunately, they won't be able to play with it. Seneco. I'm faking the hook shot. They are all grouped up, but... There's only about jumping this deep. Another ward's going to be laid down here from Cybercats, but they're going to leave the area. Honestly, even Dawnbreaker hitting level 25 would be big, though, for Cybercats. Double star Starbreaker charges, just anything that's going to give you more magic immunity mm. against, like, like, all of these heroes. Like, they're still so heavily magic-reliant right now on Bet Boom. Well, he can kill one hero with Basher and Double Starbreaker. So, uh, Shigetsu can take one hero out of the fight. You've got DK Focus that can take one hero out of the fight as well. And then maybe all of a sudden you just multiple members down on Bet Boom, and you could have some difficulties now with the overwhelming amount of numbers that Cybercats would be playing with. I honestly wouldn't even hate seeing him build a pipe on someone like the Marcy, for a example. Pipe. Pretty good, man. 30% uh, magic it. resist for yourself when you're getting focused down at the start of a lot of these fights. Like, you are the one enabling this razor a lot of the time. <laughs> Where's he gonna get the gold for a pipe, though? <laughs> He's so... He's got the Philosopher Stone just sitting there, just waiting in his backpack. You see Gil Gear farming. They saw the Avalanche rocks. Oof. He'll back off, though, with that Thunder Gods. <laughs> Continue to saw this one out a little bit. Feels like we're going to be waiting on this next Roshan between Bet Boom and Cybercats. Of course, there is a Nebuth lead continuing to grow for the lads on Dyer. For a long time, they've had a lot of the map to play with. Go to the Satanic next on Shigetsu. I'm not sure how crazy I am about that, just because you've already got lifesteal from the Marcy. Six second duration. And you've got the extra 80 attack speed from your level 25 talent. So I kind of feel like that fulfills that role for you. I guess he could sell a Falcon Blade for it. But after that, I really want to see him go into something like that Swift Blink. Sell the boots. No boots are for Giga Chads. Do you know that? You probably win. You're a crappy support player. Go on. Say it. Bunch of losers. But every support player in chat is not a loser. Just whoever's name. Go on, Ed. 100% win rate on land, that's all I gotta oh, say. So cringe. Played against an offlane Crystal Maiden. And trashed it. No surprise. I agree, I am amazing. But uh, well, we've seen a bunch of smoke rivers. It really feels like if they found someone, it would have been like just an additional little bonus. But the main purpose was just getting some of that map control back because they were being suffocated inside their own base. Back that net worth, greed, net worth lead was growing even further. I mean, just in the past, like, what, five minutes? It's grown about an extra 
5,000. That shouldn't be happening. You're still in a really good spot to be able to make plays around the map as Cybercats. They're not out of this by any stretch. No, they are not, but I'm just struggling to see how they're ever going to get set up for a team fight. It just, it feels like Bet Boom are continuing to pull them across the map, and they're just waiting to, to have someone split where they're ready to, to go. Like, they're communicating their heads two, three steps in advance on what they need to do to get someone split up, and then they can make that attempt. Like, see, DK Fogos is alone right now, and they're going to start to TP down, so there you go. That's that one attempt that you're looking for, and they're going to pounce on the opportunity. Any TP's coming out, any help, no assistance, DK's gone. So that's what you're waiting for. Bedroom finally catch a break where someone's alone, and they got the Nimbus to protect the retreat. A curse, but it's only half duration. The Hawk's still in a little bit of trouble at the moment. They need to be able to get the static link. Well, she gets you with the four stuff away. Pops a refresher, but the Hawk still, they haven't sold enough damage. She gets you, won't be able to stand his ground against the Hawk. And able to be giving your cooldown. Low pounces on forward, gets rid of the Razor. And now Gigil, Gilgi is going to be able to follow up as well as Bet Boom. Beautifully done, finally. They get the start they were waiting for. Notice also kills off Eagle to the east side as Bet Boom can now crack the high ground. And notice, take a bow. That fight is so different if he doesn't get off that Lotus Orb onto the Nature's Prophet. Oh, yeah. It would have just enabled. Plus back, they've got the Sprout. Down. Uh oh, he's, what can you do to protect? Rooted. He's gone. He is a goner. And that's looking like it's game. Bet Boom. Might be able to send us the distance here. Four down, all without a buyback. gilgi has got the razor as well. As we're going to be going the distance. Jeez, it dropped. Bet boom. It took him 45 minutes to take this second game. But in the end, they will be able to do it in fine fashion. That was more of the bet boom that I was expecting to see. But we did see a few, let's call it misplays, coming out from Bet Boom, right? Like, uh, spells not connecting well together, Ember Spirit again just racks up another loss. It really feels like it's a little bit awkward to have to play around this hero that doesn't actually provide... It, it was good at dealing with the Nature's Prophet, I suppose, but that wasn't the main concern. The main concern was the Zeus. You had no way to be able to jump the backlines and reliably lock down the Zeus to be able to get kills. We saw one early-ish into the game around the, uh, the Ancients, and then after that, it really felt like they just played a lot more around Lyle. What was his damage that game? Yeah, 62,000. Yeah, yeah they, they needed to deal with that a whole lot more effectively. But 62,000? Hang on. How did you go into 62,000? Sorry, sir. That is... Uh, you're not rounding up there. Come on now. Come on now. Are you going to keep undermining me? Or are we going to talk about this post-game? Phasor, <laughs> I, I, he had a good start to the game, right? But his position was just a little bit off. And uh, that's... Wyvern is a, window, a hero that has a high ceiling, but it also has a terribly low floor if you're just getting picked off really early on. Like, it's... They had a ton of magic damage as well. So the Cold Embrace, next to useless. I can see why he wanted to go into the Glimmer Cape, just to provide that little bit of extra survivability for his team. I needed to see more four staffs. I needed to see. I mean, even in that last fight, he didn't use his wand. He didn't use the witchbane when people were being like locked down and CC'd and all this sort of stuff. So there's room for improvement. I think Shigetsu played probably as well as he could have that game. I really liked his choice to go into the four staff because it really enabled him a lot in those team fights. But yeah, just wasn't enough. Good teamwork by Bet Boom. Cybercats, they got a game three. That's the important thing. They got a game three to be able to look forward to, but for Bet Boom, they really showed the power that we've seen for many games with this Nature's Prophet. Just completely pulling them across the map, getting them frustrated, making it difficult for them to be able to take the team fights on their own accord when they have the numbers advantage, where they have the information, where they can get that uh, that jump. And I think for, uh, we brought it up a, a little bit as well, but it really felt like Dai were doing an incredible job with the, the warning game overall. Of course, it's uh, you, you're going ha to have an advantage when you have a Zeus on your team, but we just saw it felt like it was very difficult for Cybercats to ever get that initiation. So what was... And just a couple of times where they didn't take Roche when they killed the Batrider. Like it happened twice. And that felt like a big reason why they didn't have as much of that map control, because you had to, like we saw at the very end of that game, one pickoff, suddenly you just can't fight quite as effectively. 
feel like if you've got that second life, there's time for the team to rotate. Did they even take the T1 mid by the end of that game on Cybercats? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Just little things like that. It just gives them so much more freedom to be able to move around. It means that your smokes have to go through like certain little nooks and crannies that aren't as efficient. So just, I don't know, minor things that end up ballooning into so much more was the the name of this game. Yeah, it's going to be exciting to see what the call is from the, the lads on Cybercats. Do you consider banning out the Nature's Prophet in game one, uh, sorry, in game three, or do you look to come up with maybe a, a bit of a different strategy to deal with the Hawks' Nature's Prophet? But we will find out all, uh, we're going to find out all the answers after the break. That is the exciting thing because we get a game three as well for the elimination match. One of these teams, their road will be done after this game and one of the teams will move over to the lower bracket semifinals. Who will it be? We'll find out after the break. I've lost control of it, I've lost control You give me air to breathe, you give me light to see
You thought that I was blind But to be honest, I don't mind Cause I don't feel the same way I used to do Every time I see you, I know the truth Cause baby
And we are gone the distance, and it's only fitting we get a game three. Betboom taking on Cybercats, one of these teams will be done and dusted from the hunt to be able to join the lovely lads. You have Talon, Fnatic, Boom, Alliance, a couple of really big rosters in Western Europe as well that they're able to fight against in Malaysia. Ben, Bet Boom and Cybercats. Then I, you're the Oracle. Lay it all down for us. Tell us what is in store. A fun game of Dota 2. Oh, boring. Alright, well, I predicted the Furion, so cool. I didn't hear that. Well, I'm well, well I kind of predicted. I said, let's see how they dress it, and they dress it with a band. Mm -hmm. It's good enough for me. Even if they win this, the winning team has to come up against Na'Vi, and that's no easy task. Ooh, yeah, they easy. were kind of dumpstered in the upper bracket remaining. by Game of Gladiators, but they're, they're a good team. They're a damn Five good team. So remaining. I think no matter who we get out of these European qualifiers, they're going to be a worthy representative to join all those other lovely teams that you mentioned. Well, we get to go back to the DK Fogos Enigma. It's going to be exciting to see, but Bet Boom, they have plenty of picks to be able to address this hero. Whether it be, you don't have the Brusa back at least to kind of deal with him in the lane. So we could see like a Rubik plus one, Wyvern plus one. Uh, I'd love to recommend a Conquer, but that hero is really very rarely played safe lane. Is there any other heroes that you kind of like to lane versus the Enigma, very similar to a Brusa back? Al the Chemist, but probably not likely. So Interesting. They just wanted to go for flex. These two heroes can fit anywhere, and then they can just round out their draft however they want. They, they feel like the two heroes of the patch, to be honest. Like, you can just throw them anywhere, they're going to have an impact, whether it be from mid, whether it be from the uh, the support role. From, it, it, it does not matter. I don't think it'll be a Zeus 5, though. Do you like Zeus 5? I don't know. People have... I like it in the right game. Like, if you've got a, a lineup where you've got a hero and then you're up against, like, I don't know, a Doom plus one where they don't exactly <clears throat> they don't exactly have much kill threat, then you can make a Zeus work. But it needs to be a Zeus that's drafted, like, really early, and then you've just been forced to flex it. And you just become, like, a dewarding bot that does a lot of damage. Mm, all right. They do still go down the puck for Eagle, so... It is a pretty tricky matchup. If Tiny gets an Avatos and Zeus with the Thunder Gods, he's going to die. He will not have the health to survive through that. Mm hmm. Wonder if this changes up where the Tiny <clears throat> is being played as well. Like maybe they're trying to force the Tiny mid this game, just saying, hey, look at this. Uh, look at our Puck matchup. You're going to be able to beat out on this one, but then you're going to have more HP, which means that the Enigma, the Midnight Pulse is more effective. Just all these sorts of things. And maybe they're more concerned about a Zeus being able to ball out of control like Lal did in that game number two. Radiant team ban. We'll at least get to see... I, I imagine their 15th pick is going to be something that doesn't Dyer have a lot of flex. Ban. Probably looking towards the position five here. It's the Seneco. Warlock and the Chen band out. I'd imagine it's a Beastmaster ban. Coming next from Cybercats. BKB piercing disable... Good at converting onto a puck if you get that initial stun or even Ten just use the hawk to remaining. have your raw be the initial stun. Five seconds remaining. Uh, so I haven't even seen any contest with the Visage in, in this series. Of course, I mean, the hawk is both It played. was banned one game. I think okay, game two okay. was banned. There you go. Well, it's... I think actually banned it, which was odd, but... Oh, well. Radiant team ban. Let's take a ban. Okay. Um, I don't Radiant hate. Oh, I mean, it's it's pretty good. Zeus and, and Tiny, very nice combination with it. They're actually going to go down an Io route, so a lot of global potential. Maybe it's a Tiny yeah. plus one. That against an Enigma, that's not bad. Definitely. Lots of physical damage with the old tree. <sighs> it's it is a concern though. Cybercats, their first two heroes are very good at team fight. And IO lineups always struggle, often remaining. struggle in that regard if you really don't supplement IO's weaknesses in team fights. And Tiny Zeus kind of do, but I feel like nothing like the Enigma and, and, and Puck in that regard. So 
it's going to be interesting to see what Cybercats want to do. If they want to double down with this kind of five man, or if you look to go another way. I mean, do they do they just Rubik next on Betboom? It almost feels like that's the way that you have to go because I think I'm going to sound like a fanboy, but like it, just any support that's a team fight disruptor is going to be good. Wyvern is good at that. So is Rubik this game in particular because you've got, of course. Coil, silences, black hole that you can look to steal. So I, I really wouldn't hate seeing a Rubik this game. It does kind of tell you exactly where the Zeus is going to be, but I don't think it's the worst outcome. Like Zeus into Puck is fine. You're both going to farm. Yeah, I think you could argue for a Bane for a similar reason, just because I th- IO pairing very nice to be able to cancel black hole, uh, can catch the Puck on the sidelines. Okay, that's my only sure. downside. Okay, yep. Oh, is there what's in the pool for them to pair with a Marcy? They, I mean, you can go Marcy Enigma. It's a definitely a pretty potent lane, especially with the Eidolons being able to do a bunch of damage here, t- chucking them back. You also have the break of the coil, which is going to be nice. Uh, what else will be good? I mean, Juggernaut seems fine to me. Uh, life stealer seems kind of okay. Probably, did you more than likely reveal your offlane though? Your offlane slash four on cybercats? Yeah, you can. I mean, it you, could be an enigma offlane. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. Are you comfortable with them picking their shigetsu here or here? If you're assuming that this tiny is going to be a position one, sure. Radiant if you're assuming that's going to be the case, and yeah, I, I, I'm rocking with a life stealer. Ooh, we get a Phoenix instead. Okay, well, now it's different. <laughs> now it's going to be a gyro position one. The only situation where I ever want to see a gyro position one is when it's paired together with an IO. And, uh, I mean, it is a decent egg hitter. You know, you get that overcharge paired Radiant up, you can just use the flat back. cannon to deal with that plus everything else. Really feels to me, though, that this, uh, this egg is going to be used as like a bit of a bait. Like, they're going to try and put it into a quote-unquote bad spot and then just jump in with the black hole follow-up mm. i think the life still is still a pick they can go down you you can itemize for like a hell bit this game to help with the the egg and i think you can have plenty of damage coming out from the your other heroes not to worry um i would normally recommend the morphling against the gyro but i think he's going to get blown up with tiny and zeus and so life still is probably the one i'm looking at um, Five seconds remaining. Uh, Jug is still also another Radiant potential. You, I'm almost certain you brought that up before with the life store as well. So I'm still very comfortable with them Dire going team. down those routes. And there's the Jug man. I think I like Scardy builders as well. Uh, yeah. Just against this gyro plus IO combination is going to be nice. Do I feel like a Medusa? Not really. Um... Do I feel like a Terra Blade? Not really. Ten seconds remaining. So what else is there? Radiant team pick. Man, stands mm. You never like a troll. Mm. All right, so we're looking eh. for. You're looking for your offlane, or uh, probably going to be tiny. F- Ten seconds. Is master. Did you just go axes? Is that what you're expecting? No, no, sure. no balls. No axes. Sure. Inner beast helps with the egg. Instant stun for a puck and an enigma. Oh, oh Danog, let's go. Told you I was the oracle. <laughs> oh, shut up. Oh, my God. Oh, well, you didn't guess she gets to and, and everyone else. You didn't ask me to. Well, I kind of did. I said, come on, lay, lay it all out. Yeah, no, I was just 10 picks delayed. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, but I meant, <laughs> I meant every single hero, not just one. Well, you got to be more specific next time. Oh, all right, fine. Here we go, though. Game three. You caught the Beastmaster. Does this mean that you like Bet Boom? Did you feel like have what it takes? Or are we going back in the Cybercats to get through onto the Sven? He had a very good game one. Same with DK Fogos as well. So they got something that they've been able to win with so far through the series. 
I mean, it's once again where this team fight is just kind of nutty on Cybercat's side, right? Black Hole, Dream Coil, Supernova. You've got the air, the, the Sunray against multiple strength heroes with your own strength hero to be able to buff up. So I feel like this game is on pretty heavily on Gilgir's shoulders, to be honest. Like, if he's able to get an early-ish Blink Dagger, then Igor's not going to have such a free time. And then on Cybercat's side, it's just, can you find Beastmaster? Because if you can, then there's really nothing stopping uh, these teamfight spells from coming off with relative ease, I'd say. That's going to be the big question, though. Can they get the, the big ultimates off? So they have to line up once again, and we saw what could happen when Cybercats were able to lay all these ultimates down. Do you feel like Bedroom have this potential maybe to... Like, is this a lineup that you could see end the game early before the ultimates are a big issue? Uh, what, we're saying like 25, 30 minutes? Yeah, yeah. I could see it being a possibility. They are not cooldown reliant at all. Like, you're always going to be able to do consistent damage. You're always going to be do what your hero was made to do uh, with, you know, the Beastmaster and the Zeus. They're probably the most cooldown reliant on the team, and they could still output a lot of their damage. They could still use the inner beast aura with the Helm of the Overlord push. So, yeah, I could certainly see it. Again, Gyro, Tiny, Io, they just need to be standing around, basically, continuously pushing. Oh, no, no. We'll see. It's, it's, I haven't casted an IO game in quite some time. I've been... Oh, it's, the, it's a Nako IO as well. Yeah. The, uh, again, been watching a lot of replays, and the only team I've really been seeing so far that's putting emphasis on the IO is, is Na'Vi. They've won three out of three games. They've gone IO Gyro, and a lot of teams are still continuing to ban the IO against them in the first phase, which... Uh, I'm not seeing pretty much anyone else put the emphasis on. I don't know if you saw it. Like, I know Secret, it's always been a team that you, you kind of get rid of the IO. They're an incredible IO team. I don't know if you saw anyone, or them in particular, anyone at, at Rehard that, that the IO was getting banned against. No, nah, no one at Rehard, really. Yeah, it's interesting. Here is just uh, no, no value with it at the moment. Sometimes it can just be comfort as well. Like, Insania, for example, is an insane Oracle player. And you would have to say IO is probably a better hero than oracle at the moment but he just makes it seem like a, a tier or two above whenever he plays it the battle begins what would it be if not another bounty rude skirmish we want blood though oh, none of this just kind of crap spell casting just posturing aggressively pumping up the chest a little bit but we get no oh, kills they'll come What's something going on? different we finally got to hark going to his lane Instead of just another lane. Uh, something not different is Gilgir on the Tiny. Three games in a row now for the stand-in. Let's see. These body blocks by DK Fogus as well. He the wasn't part of that going to be in some trouble. They're starting with a try lane on Cybercats. It'll catch Gilgir off guard. They are not going to get him though. Okay. They are really bullying Noticed away from the lane, though. Like, he's going to lose out on a lot of this XP. They missed that Fire Spirit. Hmm. Okay. He's gone... Is this interesting? He's gone Wand? To start? I wouldn't expect this to be a lane that's too spam-heavy. Maybe expecting the tri lane to happen at the start? I don't know. <laughs> it seems a little weird to me as well, but... Oh, uh, just, I suppose, wanting a bunch of stats to be able to trade relatively well against the Sven. Gotta say, again, it's another great... I don't want to say a great spend game, but the Warcry is going to be nice against the Gyro. Yep. Everybody deal with the Beastmaster summons relatively well. Of course, not as heavy as a lane counter because you do go down this Axes. Of course, AoE stun is always nice as well versus the Iro. More than likely, you're going to have him grouped up with someone else. So we'll see how the Sven is going to... Be able to thrive in a game like this. I have my fourth Sven game today. What the hell is going on? I haven't seen Sven in yonks and all of a sudden I got four games today of him. <laughs> what? I feel like we need to start using more Australian slang in our casts. Like, I'm sure a lot of people are saying, like, yonks? What the hell is that? Is it Aussie slang? I don't know. Yes. Okay. What, what, what else do you want to use? I don't, but it's more... 
I feel like Australian slang is very specific to gen. Uh, it's difficult to bring into a Dota concept because we, you know, we add O's to everything, servo, arvo, you know, everything like that. I feel like how, how are you going to add that to a Dota cast? It's, it's not like a general things that we're speaking about. I mean, just little sayings like. Uh here we go. Let's hear it. Uh, well, I'm just going to drop the F-bomb. Uh, you know, I'm not here to fuck spiders, like that sort of thing. Oh my god. <laughs> what the... <laughs> just use it in such a bad way. Yeah, we give you the F-bomb, and you just... <laughs> it is a saying. I mean, it is a saying, but you have to use it at a good timing, and uh, I feel like you just... you didn't. I was using it as an example. Yeah, but it was a horrible example. Use something else. What am I into? Hawk. They got two points in the idol, and since damage is going to ramp up... Well, Sinecro's here. And Dark feels like he can turn it back around. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Who's the spider this game? Um, yeah, never mind. No, we're, we're not going to get into that. <laughs> what, about some, what about some Telemys dreaming, you know? Mark my territory. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, uh, what's going on? Buckley's chance, maybe? <laughs> Wait, what? Because there's no chance. Buckley's... Oh, God. All right, boomer stuff again. You're like, hey, here you go. Freaking Zuma doesn't know what the sayings are. You don't know anything, okay? <laughs> you know, lifts at the gym, and that is it. Right, there's nothing wrong with that. Gains or death. I'll take death. <laughs> Live or die by the gym. You know, you know Ziz, right? I know Ziz. <laughs> that was my day, okay? Ziz, you can't claim him. Ziz was I'm not, my I'm not idol claiming him. Do. I'm not claiming him. Uh, there'll be a couple people. This is... What are your thoughts on Dahar going two points Rocket Barrage instead of maxing out the flak in this lane? I'm a little confused about it, to be mm. honest, right? Like, you're up against the Eidolons, you want to be able to deal with them very easily. They won't be able to get the Multiply here. He's done it, unfortunately, with the Eidolons, so... Decent amount of damage onto the Hawk, but he's already got the Treads and... A couple of levels to be able to play with. DK Fogo, so... The Hawk's always going to shut the lane in, and Enigma naturally has the, the capability to drag the lane back as well, so... Enigma's going to be able to get a lot of experience. I'm just intrigued to see what H2O wants to do in this lane. You do... I feel like you have the luxury of being able to create some stacks for the Sven. I suppose so. I mean, it really gets a little easier if you can put one point into the Spirits to be able to do it, but obviously that's not the way that you want to be playing this lane. You want to just be enabling... Uh, wait, thinking wrong side. Never mind. <laughs> Ignore everything I just said. Okay, the classic. You know what? It's 1.30. I can... I, I have the license to mess up a couple of things every now and then. Oh, not good enough. I finished at 5.30, was up at 11. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> me, 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 me. That's all it's all mm. about with you, isn't it? You're yeah. Upside. Ooh, all right. Lol, got the level 6 to work with. They're able to secure first blood. Love to see it. A bunch of gold and a little bit of experience for Mr. Lol. Radiant are scanning. Loving these rotations by Gilgear as well. Keep it active around the runes, making sure to secure them. Unluckily, though, Eagle's the one that's going to be able to claim it, and it's a haste rune. That's not too bad. So he's going to look to try and put a little bit more pressure, force this lane out, probably. Marcy down one bottom might well. be in some trouble. Okay, I can just jump away. I see. Marcy in trouble? What are hmm. we talking about? Ooh. How dare I think H2 is going to get chased down. But yeah, Eagle's definitely in a position now where he can make a rotation and try and get some kills happening. They should know this, though. Well, he might Radiant just go back and look to secure the small attack. camp for himself. It is kind of obvious, right? Like, they saw him take the haste rune. And even without this uh, Observer Ward that was recently laid down by Suneko, nope, he actually ends up going top. Don't hate this movement. Notice. That's going to be the target. A quick and easy kill. Great rotation coming out from Igor, and this haste, he should be able to connect back to the mid lane fast so he doesn't miss out on too much gold or experience. 
Yeah, the much more common thing to expect was that he might be coming down towards the bottom side. They saw him go in towards uh, taking that small camp, but instead making the uh, the less obvious move. And it was the right one. It's definitely a bit more of a, a slower paced game here in Game 3. Both Game 1 and Game 2, we had a lot of action early on, but... It's an important game between these two teams, so they're looking to play this one a little bit more passive and and get themselves in the groove. I feel like there's any stacks that have started to build up just yet. Right now, Gilgit just scouting out, stealing away a lot of that valuable XP. He, of course, knows that he's there because of the Hawk giving all of that vision. Right now it does feel like a little bit of bait though, uh, but Lyle just being a little bit short on the mana means that they're not going to be able to secure that one for themselves. Shigetsu though has to be a little bit careful. No instant way for the team to be able to bring him to safety. They actually mess up getting rid of that, that, that Observer Ward on the high ground as well, so... Uh, Shigetsu able to continuously farm. He's even got that Mask of Madness built up for himself now too. I think it's Beastmaster has been putting a lot of significance as well on, on making stacks at the triangle. Just with the micro of the boars. He's done a really good job. Doubled the... actually tripled the hard. Maybe a quad at the Ancients as well. So very impressed with, with how much they've been able to work with so far early on. And, and Dai, they only have a double at the hard camp. So not as much for Shigetsu to catch back up with. Another stack... Yeah, he gets it on both. Really being incredibly done from noticed. Is he going to take it himself? You greedy bugger. I don't think he can. Like, he doesn't have the mana to be able to do it. He's going to try. Ooh, on the what? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, you hate to see it. That's Coil expended now, so de it's a bit of a window. 70 seconds, but they do not have to be worried about Eagle rotating. And I really wasn't expecting these wild axes all to be expanded on taking this. I suppose Notice got kind of bodied in the lane, so he needs that comeback potential, but I really felt like just the stack gold plus the creeps that were underneath his tower just previously would have been enough. I suppose it is important for him to get up into that Helm of the Dominator, though. Look at this guy. Eh, juicy stacks for himself. Get the last right click, do it. Yes! Oh, it was at the minute mark as well. Noticed. Beautifully done. It is giving a free lane to Phasor. So this Phoenix is already level 6. We're probably going to see... I, I really would like to see, honestly, the next coil usage be with the Phoenix. You have these ultimates. Probably make a play down bottom if you feel required to have multiple heroes to secure the tower. It does look like at the moment they're getting a decent amount of damage with DK Fergus and, and H2O. Right, coming out though, Bepum, Lal, and Gilgit looking to connect together with this Helm of the Dominator that's being delivered through for Noticed, and of course, Relay Kate always going to be available for Io and Gyrocopter to be able to join in. Top lane, Eagle. There we go, Claws out with the Supernova, drops straight on the dome of the Beastmaster. They're going to try and target down the Supernova, and they get it! The Nika timing, the last right click, and all of Boom show up! The Hawks and Echo, the plus two to help out. The cavalry has arrived and Cybercats, multiple heroes expended and they only get the Beastmaster. They did commit everyone though to be able to come up there. So in the meantime, Sven continuing to farm. Also Enigma being able to take that bottom T1 tower, getting himself closer and closer towards that Blink Dag, which of course... I feel like the next time that movement happens, they're not going to be punished. Oh, sorry, they are going to be punished a whole lot more heavily because you're going to have that Blink Dagger black hole response. Every single time that you see that reload kick coming in with the Iowan Gyrocopter, it's what you need to be concerned about. This is, is giving a lot of space over to Shigetsu, where my guy is top of the net worth and love and life here for the carry onto Cybercats. Almost Echo Saber completed, flawless game so far, so... He's really working on his farm game. I feel like DK Focus is doing a good job. Mid lane. Just dragging. Coil is out. 
They're gonna look for the damage on H2 instead of trying to break the coil, and... Oh, that'll be able to pay off. A big kill for them, trying to slow down Lyle's game. They've even got the regen. I believe that's the Witchblade as well completed for the puck. So that's going to give him a whole lot more potential to just... Not necessarily standard fight, but withstand a little bit of what Dehuk's going to throw his way. And again, I want to see DK Focus in this moment look to use this opportunity to continue the push onto the bottom side. There isn't a Siege Creep to play around anymore, but they want to force... Well, they actually have forced the Glyph to be popped previously, so really does open up a huge opportunity for them to be able to take this tier 2 tower, at least awesome. force some rotations, and then make a play elsewhere. He's got that blink dagger coming out to him now. Regeneration. We'll see. What's the play going to be for Cybercats? How can we get this Enigma involved into the game? I, I don't know how I feel confident. Like, they're, they're buying up smokes. They're really ready to potentially go and make this fight happen. But Sven doesn't have guard strength. And it really does feel like that's a huge portion of the damage right now. Phoenix, just the one point in the sun ray. That feels like a, a big part of what's going to win you a lot of these team fights. Like, they've got some good heals. Like, almost finished up into the mechanism on the IO. Full points into the overcharge. Make sure, gotta make sure that you take your fights wisely. You put a lot of importance in game two on trying to get Gilgear a, a lane where he could find that farm, because we saw how late of a, a timing the blink came out in game one. Do you feel like Betboom can somehow you know, divvy out a, a little bit of farm over to, to Gilgear in, in this game? I think a lot of that farm just needs to come from towers. You know, like, they got to try and find the pickoff somehow and use that to convert into more objectives to enable him an extra couple of camps, or camps for his cause so that he can farm the lane. Almost a big rune for them to find, though, on Lyle. Arcane at the ready, almost level 12. And the Gyrocopter has taken over the top of the network. This is BKB completed onto Hark as well. So this is going to be a big item for this next fight to break out. They've even got the mechanism as well for Seneco. For sure, but you also need to consider the levels. It's nearly level 13 on Shigetsu, they... only just hitting up onto 10 oh, on the that... Hark. They can't roast, can they? I think this is going to be very slow if they do. Mm. I was going to say, surely Jaro and I can't roast themselves, but there you go. Notice comes. And all right, what do they see in the lanes right now? Bottom, they're going to see Lyle showing, so at least someone showing. No one's showing bottom as well. And he's going to get pushed in shortly. Nor top, but they've got no deep wards to play with, so I don't think Cybercats are going to be able to read this. It was being pigged out, but I think they just feel like it's a little bit too late. Has fallen to the mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Lags. Just letting him take a moment to to remember and yeah, you know, she gets he he, he kinda gets it. He's like, okay, I see what you're doing. What are they doing? I can understand that. Not wanting to take that fight, though, on Cybercats. Look how close they are to Blink Daggers on both Puck and Sven. It's, it's actually nuts. Even just now, you know, 15 minutes has just happened. Phoenix can go into the Aghanim Shard. You don't need a, a BKB to be able to protect your, your Sunray. You know, th there's no way that they're going to be able to interrupt it. Like, honestly, the Sunray, it's, uh, sorry, the Supernova itself is the... I don't want to say the worst part of it, but once you get that Aghanim shard, it feels like the Sunray is the one doing a lot of the damage. Although, I've only got the one point into it so far. It means that it's not going to be quite so good. Still ends up buying it, but it really feels like you're going to have, obviously, not as much effectiveness with that. Yeah, you see he's got the tome queued up, so it definitely is recognizing that he has some issues right now on the levels. And he's also trying to take a little bit of farm up top in the lane, getting some of the jungle camp as well. So hopefully he's able to build onto the levels in the Sunray. But... I do like the call, like you mentioned, though. They're so close to the blinks, they don't want to take the fire. And first Roche is definitely that Roche you can also look to avoid. It's one that you don't have to commit to. That second Roche is, is definitely a difficult call to avoid, though, with the Ag Shard. And that usually is the Aegis where you're strong enough to go high ground. Still 15 seconds until the Glyph, so I wonder if they might be able to get a little bit of damage in onto this tower. Lal looks like he's in place to make sure that, that doesn't happen. It's a great ward that Dai can play with top. It's a really good ward. I, I wonder if they're going to try and defend off the back of this ward. It's giving them a lot of information. 
There comes the call. Igor's going to be in as well with a coil. The break it instantly. The follow-up's going to be a little bit too late, though, and Igor, he's out of mana. The notice is not in a position to be able to jump and utilize the raw. So Cybercats, they'll throw the coil out. You have to be a bit cautious, though. They're also going to see Gilgi wrapping. Observer Sentry combo gives him the confirmation of Tiny's position. Gilgi is going to see DK Fogus. Oh, beautifully oh, done. The Sentry read. But that, that, they've lost their formation now. They can't look for the defense on the T2 tower, and especially not with the Marcy dead. And, and Faisal's in trouble. They're pinging out. He's got the die, but low oh, oh, on point with the lightning bolt, and he's got the Yules to cancel the TP as well. A beautiful move from Bet Boom, recognizing that Cybercats were teeping back to set up for the defense. They reposition, they ate the coil, and they're able to wrap around and catch them while they were trying to reset up the formation. And now they're able to secure a T2 tower, outposts available for them to claim, and they can now look to take the T1 mid. They can. It was a good move back by Cybercats, you know, all on the back of that Observer Ward that you called out before, it's, it's been dewarded, but... Honestly, you don't expect Igor, with how well he's been playing this entire series, to be TPing back with, like, what, a quarter of his mana pool? He didn't- oh my god. <laughs> Three Eidolons, easy like that. Alright, we are... You got two minutes to stall out these ages here. They're probably... I'm trying to see what DK they can do. Yep. That's but, what you're waiting for. I'm just trying to see what Bepboom can do with these Aegis now. I, I don't know if they're strong enough to be able to control the triangle. I, they would love to do that to be able to cut mid and bot. Maybe they could consider just taking the T1 tower instead down bottom. Like it's not very, uh, it's not a heavy commitment where you could put yourself in a, a position where Cybercats can defend and, and wipe you deep inside their territory. But maybe they also just feel content your minute 40, just get the farm up. Well, they're looking to chase in onto Igor, won't be able to catch him out and make the kill happen. I mean, the thing that I think Bet Boom really wants to do is they want to get... They want to try and force a team fight, and that feels really weird to say, considering you're up against this, like, overwhelming team fight. But right now, Tahak is just falling further and further behind in levels relative to the Sven. Like, he's level 12, Sven's level 16. Ooh. So they need to try and take a fight with the benefit of this Aegis, especially now that you've got level 2 on the ulti. So you're going to feel a little bit more confident. That they're baiting Gilgir. They had the board behind in the lane, so they're well aware of Hero's moving over to try and bring down the Tiny. The Relocate's gonna come out, but they gotta be cautious if they group up, because DK Fogos, there's the Black Hole, but no one's gonna stick around. They know they have the Aegis to work with if the team fight continues to break out, and they've gotta cancel for the TP nonetheless, as Bet Boom, it will be a two for two, but you get the big kill onto the Sven and Denog, exactly what you're asking for as well. A team fight where Tahak can start to get some experience. I mean, it nearly gives him two full levels on his own, and honestly, I being dead now is a little bit of a benefit. He's going to get this full creep wave solo for himself, get himself up to that level 14, and then suddenly the gap has been closed by a couple of levels. And the vision game all comes down to it for Bet Boom. It really gave them a big advantage in that second game. They've got a Zeus and Beastmaster to work with, but it was just all back to the basics with that Observe Ward by the small camp down bottom, was able to scout out the positioning with Cybercats. They were well aware that they were looking to jump the tiny, and they're trying to get this blink on Gilgir. He's so goddamn close to it, and looks like that neutral camp should be able to provide it, but beautifully done from the lads on Bet Boom, and now you are working with another way to initiate the fights. And it, I understand why he didn't do it, because I've been talking about it all game, the setup with the black hole for the relocate in. But if he just dropped that black hole instantly, he would have caught the Zeus. And that would have honestly turned the team fight well in Cybercat's favor. I, I feel like pre-BKB on Shigetsu, Zeus is the one that he's worried about. So if he was able to just connect through, burst him down, then suddenly Io Gyro, even with the Aegis, would have been nowhere near enough. Shigetsu. They're going to smoke on the back, but Gilgir gets a jump. Avalanche onto two, but the combo's not going to be enough. Cybercats are not fighting with some ultimates. Oh, she gets you pop BKB. I don't. He popped it behind the teacher tower. I don't know if that was a mistake or if he felt like there was going to be a, a chase in the end. But that is now BKB down for eighty seconds. Big deal. I'm not sure if they saw it though, considering it was so far back. Maybe this observer orb that was placed down by some Seneco got a, a quick glimpse of it, but 
He's going to back off entirely, look to try and get back into that Echo Saber for himself, level 18. That's going to be the next time Dyer's that Cybercats are wanting to take any kind of team fight. Gilgir. Runs into H2O. Two Notice as well nearby with the dive bomb. Notice is pretty goddamn farm. Keeping up with the Pox net worth. Top lane, Shigetsu. They've been able to run into the Sven. BKB still on cooldown. What's the play to... DK Focus needs to deal with the missile. He's going to blink further to the left side. They'll kill off the Enigma. And they're going to go for Shigetsu next as well. And they're going to be questioning why is this guy not BKB? Well, because it's still on cooldown. An easy kill. And now Phaser as well. Notice... A roar with the summons. Eagle's gonna try and deal with a tr Dark Troll Summoner, but he doesn't have the damage to bring it down before Phazor loses his life. They're just being outnumbered everywhere. Obviously, with heroes up on the top side, that Phoenix for free. Here I am. It's, it's not even like it's a game where we can be speaking about. Late game, BKB Black Hole can turn this one around. You have the answer into in the Beastmaster. And really, if you, you're feeling... You're feeling jiggy with it. I don't know, this Jari, he can go Basher if he wants to. So it's never... How often do you feel jiggy with it? I feel, I feel jiggy with it right now. Well, Maybe Eagles also... Oh, no. Okay. Did you see that? Yeah, Just yeah. The, luckily... Oh, I don't think it was lucky he had the, uh, yeah. the Observer Ward Sentry down. What do you mean? You ain't feeling jiggy with it? You know what, I was, and then you just kept bullying me, and that really put me off. Ah, uh, freaking loser. Wait, how short sure are you right? again? Sorry? Uh, it's how tall am I, and I am a 180 centimeter giant. Giant, Jesus Christ. Uh, keep telling yourself that, it's okay. One day, you'll grow. Uh, I think you're starting to shrink now, actually, I don't know. <laughs> My bones. <laughs> <laughs> They're compressing. <laughs> I'm not already. God damn, boomers. Oh my. Dude, Jar is rich as all hell. Dados completed on the Hawk. This guy might be a little bit behind in levels. He definitely has caught up with some of the action before, but yeah, what he's lacking in levels is definitely not lacking in gold. Oh, poor Cybercats. They're just hugging this one tiny cliff that they've got control around. Uh, you can tell Shigetsu wants to go out and farm, like, one extra creep, but they just don't have the availability to do so. Hawks, Vision, they've got it all right now on Bet Boom, and, well, he's only 20 gold away from, excuse me, that Echo Saber. Could be the difference in this next fight, but he's got to make sure he picks it up before this smoke ends up connecting through onto him. Radiance middle oh, 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 my God, Eagle. Don't do me like that. Oh, that was a quick Roche respawn as well. And this Eagle is TP'd the one that you out. can't drop free. Eagle's going to oh, show no. bottom. That's a free Roche. Oh, no. And they're also setting up for the pick off top. They had the Hawk in the tree line, so they know exactly where Phazor is. Notice and Gilgit in conjunction together. Plenty of stuns along with the damage to kill off the Phoenix. And that is, yeah, that's Roche down. Second Roche of the game. Aegis and the Ag Shard they're going to be playing with. What are they even gonna give this to? I guess the gyro? Yeah. Oh god. Surely not. Who doesn't have one? I mean, there's not there's not many better. <laughs> not the tiny? What do you mean? Not the tiny. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Spell honestly, spell life still with gyro, you could really argue. No. What do you mean? This guy does hybrid damage. What do you mean? No, that was an instant no. What flat cannon? An instant no cold down. Because it, it's gonna disable blinks, bro. If it just runs past, you could maybe disable a puck or an enigma okay. blink. Okay, okay, okay. Why didn't you say that earlier? Jesus, man. Because I wanted to make you make a fool of yourself. <laughs> Honestly, I don't need to do much to to enable that. But uh, well, we've got a full on movement coming out here from Cybercats, but it's underneath go. the Beastmaster Hawk. Again, this is a. I don't want to say an obvious movement, but it's something that's completely telegraphed. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. They... Hux only just now going into the eggs as yeah, well. Yeah, I was going to say, do you feel like they... Surely they don't have to wait Scepter to go high gun, right? Or maybe do you feel like they... What do they need? Do they need a pick off? Do they need an item? Or, or, or are they in a position right now where they can maybe break the high ground? Uh, no, just get pickoffs. You've got great lineups for it, right? 
Global potential from the Zeus Io Gyro, great stun combinations from Noticed as well as Gil Gear. Dyer's I feel like you can just very easily look to claim up the easier stuff right now and then use that to go into high ground. You've already taken all the out of towers. What's the, the vision look Gil like? Gear. The Dyer's They're going to find Shigetsu. You don't want to force a BKB out like this. He might not be in a position to do so though. Beautifully done from H2O. It's going to help him reposition and Shigetsu is out of there. Yogi does not see H2O. Man, these awards are proving to be an issue, though. Really, all the vision they're playing with for Bet Boom is making it so difficult for Cybercats. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's that, plus also just, again, not having any way to take towers early on. Like, it, I was saying before, I really wanted DK Focus to do a little bit more around this bottom side of the map. If that Tier 2 wasn't there, you could probably look to play around this area. You could play around the right-hand side of the Dire Tier 1 tower and maybe even claim that. You know, it, it makes contesting Roche easier, it makes farming for the Sven easier. They just don't have that option. They're about to run into Gil Gear. <laughs> Notice would be a great pick. Oh yeah, they'll get him instead. Alright, nice jump in next to a T1 tower as well. So they should be able to get an objective off the back of this. Who's got a Lincolns? Is that the Puck? Okay, Puck's got Lincolns. It's a win. Yeah, Cybercats will don't. take a win at this stage. Radiance top tower. It is God Strength though expended. Can you hire? Can you force something now? I want to see him try and force a glyph, maybe. Nah, his team's not attack. close enough nearby. Oh, powdered, so that's nice. Jump in, Gil Gear. Oh no, poor Marcy. Nimbus is gonna be enough damage. You gotta be cautious now how long you stick around, because the hawk is on the prowl. Dyer's bottom tower. I'll be able to catch up to the puck though. You got definitely a slippery bugger. Radiance top tower is under I don't think many people have said poor Marcy Radiance in their uh, existence top. playing Dota. Mm, poor Enigma. EK Fergus. And it's top lane for the Enigma. The ball slapping him down. And a right click for good measure. And oh, that's going to be the, the summon off from the Beastmaster. A little bit of a yoink there with the Warpine Raider. Radiance top tower is under attack. Oh. Not quite in position to be able to go for some kind of gank attempt here onto this Io Gyro. Without the god strength, it really doesn't feel like they have that potential to be able to go through. They'll try and scare him off a little bit, but realistically, Dehark doesn't need to be scared of anything. He's got that passive damage coming through. He's got Satanic. They're going to go in. Io healing him. Drag back. They didn't get the call out before the dispose and Dark. Oh my lord. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. You have to wait for this Aegis minimum, and you need the God Strength on the Sven. It'll only be one lane. It's certainly something that a Sven can come back from. They're smoking out, though. Shigetsu trying to deal with the backline supports. Smoke's gonna pop. Shigetsu playing with fire. They see him. They see him. There's the jump, another BKB. Completely nullified thanks to the Raw. They need to counter initiation, but DK Fogos, his blink's getting cancelled. So it's going to be off the back of a defensive supernova to get you, gets you back inside the base, but this BKB might just open to... the high ground again. Yeah. He used that BKB. Aegis is gone. They're... I mean, if I was them, I would be once again trying to go for some kind of big wraparound play. They can see that the Hawk is there. Try and find the Zeus if you can. Does he have an Aeon Disc? Uh, no, looks like he's just going into the Aether Lens for now. Trying to build into the Octarine, I would assume. So, Zeus is still vulnerable. Seems like they just want to ram their head into this wall, though. Ooh. Not sure how successful that's going to be. DK Focus, oh my lord! Couple of the flex, he can't die! Well, look at the oh, last instead. Him. The backline eagle! He's going to be in trouble as well. He doesn't have to blink and he'll make sure he doesn't escape. That's no buyback available for the park. I don't know why they're just running head first into this, man. This is a meat grinder right now. This is a gyro that's almost as farmed as your two top cores. You've got to go for the back if you can. And daytime, they can't get the jump. Yogi with a toss back. They get rid of the Enigma. The X Factor in this game will not be available to turn game three around and in the end of this series as well as Bet Boom. They will knock out Cyber Cats in the hunt to ESL 1 Malaysia, taking the series two to one. And game three was pretty goddamn convincing for the major team.
Yeah, that, uh, well, they're, they're not going to the major, actually. But, uh, the X major team, <laughs> apologies. <laughs> the, uh, the Beastmaster was a really good pick, right? It, it put a lot of pressure on the map. You didn't have any ways to give that same sort of pressure if the Enigma wasn't doing it. On Cybercat's side, you can have all the team fight in the world, but if the team fights never happen because Bet Boom are free to move with all their vision, what, what are you going to do against it? You know, they gave up two Roshans for free. First one, I can understand. And it's another one of these games where it's like, what's this Marcy for? I'm really not seeing it. I love it when it's paired together with something like the Razor. They didn't win that game, but you could see the reasoning behind why they did it. And it gave them the opportunity to go 45 minutes into the game. It was other mistakes that made that uh, not so great. This game, dual melee lane. No, it wasn't a dual melee lane. It was, it was paired together with the Enigma, but it just didn't do enough, right? Like it, it was always going to be a difficult one. I, I really want to see the Marcy bumped down the priority list if you don't have something set in mind that you want to pair it together with, because this just wasn't it. Yeah, it's unfortunate to see Cybercats in there, their road done here, because we, we saw all three of their games, and they were an impressive team to be able to, to, be able to watch. Uh, up I think, to me, she gets to an Igor of the stars of this team. Uh... DK Focus has the, the experience, I suppose, which is necessary, but you've certainly got a lot to build off with uh, at least the position one and the position two. So hopefully Cybercats stick with them because uh, I feel like there's a lot of growth potentially to come with them. But with that, I believe that means we have our top four so far. Gaming Gladiators Entity still playing in the upper bracket, I believe. Yeah, the game's still going on. And Na'Vi is now waiting for Bet Boom in about an hour's time to be able to play to see who moves on to the lower bracket final. So, yeah. So, uh, I think that'll be the last game of today, last series of today, before we wrap everything up all tomorrow. Yeah, we got one more series, being the, the lower bracket semifinals. Just, Navi, Bet, Boom, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just looking at the, the top four, it's something we were kind of both expecting. We were speaking on, on day one, mentioning kind of who we felt like the favorites were going to be and maybe just overall how the bracket was going to be looking and really did feel like there was that solid top four. Maybe one team could crack into there. There, were, there was opportunities. Namiga, of course, being the, the Division Two team that's being promoted to Division One. Cybercats were almost able to take one of those slots. And like you said, up and down, when they were looking good, then they were definitely a team to be uh, to be fearing. But unfortunately, this third game, it just felt like the, the strength was really there for the, the lads on, on Bedroom, the experience as well. Mm. And this was with a stand-in as well. So we hopefully we get to see uh, Force Major back. But overall, Gilgi had a, a solid performance and was able to help them, you know, send them into a, another series. So... Uh, any closing comments for for us then? Or we're going to be done tonight. No, I'm uh, I'm pretty good. I'm I'm happy to get some sleep. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, there's plenty of action, not just here. NA as well coming yes. up. I believe it'll be the last day of NA, or am I wrong? Second, no, second, second last day. day. Yeah. yeah so uh, uh, yeah. China wrapped up first, then Europe, then NA. Last but not least, China's China got one more day. China got one more day, right? Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. Who's in the grand finals? Ashtar and then LBZ. Oh, Wolf, actually, two of Ashtar areas. Okay. Um, but yeah, we've got more Europe qualifiers going on. There's going to be one more series like Denok say in an hour, which is going to be. I want to hear your predictions for all three. Ashtar's going to win China. Yep. Uh, Quincy for NA. And. Oh, okay. Um. And I think Entity for Grand Finals. I think they have... I think if they get to the best of five, which... Do you know what Game 3 is looking like at the moment? Uh, yes. Entity are 17k up, 35 minutes yeah. in. So I think Entity will probably win 3-1 Grand Finals. I think they have way too many strategies. Over... Over, over gaming... I would have I would have said Navi, but something is not looking good with them at the moment. Although they did just I'm gonna say Navi, just because I want a Eastern European team there. Alright, alright. Um we're missing one uh, what'd you say for North America? Did you say Quincy? I didn't. And I like Quincy the players better, because I'm friends with a couple of them, but I think TSM are the better team right now. Okay. So 
You know what, Quincy? Screw it. Let's say Quincy, just because I, <laughs> yeah. I want to see them there, man. Like the, the TSM, they've had the opportunities to go to a bunch of different events, third parties, blah 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 blah. Quincy haven't had that chance, so I want them to earn it, of course. But y- you got to give them the opportunity against some of these international teams prior to the international. Yeah. So it's going to be exciting to see how the rest of the qualifiers shape up. But like we were mentioning before, we got one more series. It is not going to be on this channel and the game three, maybe by the time you guys move over there, the NCD versus Gladiators series might be done. But in an hour, we will have the lower bracket semifinals and North America is going to be kicking off in a couple hours as well. So again, say it always, there is a lot of action on the ESL channel. So make sure you guys follow and stay tuned for whenever we are going back live for the qualifier action but for us, we are done tonight. Cybercats, their road ends here, but bet boom, they will continue on. It's going to be interesting to see how far they can go in their lower bracket run. But I appreciate everyone tuning in. We'll see you guys next time for some more ESL 1 Malaysia Europe close qualifiers.